speak in your heavenly language. Let heaven reign tonight. Let heaven reign tonight. Hey, I don't hear you guys excited. I don't hear you guys excited. I said, give me the fucking king of peace tonight. Hallelujah. Give it up for the Messiah tonight. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give it up, give it up. I don't hear you guys. I want to hear you guys. Go ahead and find up tongues right now in the name of Jesus. Because today's the day of deliverance. Today's the day for freedom. Today's the day for miracles to happen. Today's the day for the glory of the Lord to fill this entire room. So let's get excited for what Jesus Christ is about. Today, every single thing that's wrapped around your ankles are gonna be deshackled in the name of Jesus. Every single chain is gonna be unlocked in the name of Jesus. Every single person that's been attacked. The Lord's telling me that a lot of people right now are standing around a bunch of snakes. I don't know who you are, but whoever has been having dreams about snakes or they see that there's snakes around their feet, right now I command that snake, I command that serpent to bow down to the blood of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. That serpent will no longer have any power in the name of Jesus Christ. Who in here is dealing with leukemia? Leukemia, how do you say that? Leukemia. Leukemia. Who's dealing with leukemia or knows somebody's dealing with leukemia? I keep hearing leukemia. Who is it? Who is it? Over there. Over there. Come over here because you're going to receive your healing right now with the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. Receive your healing. Full healing in Jesus' name. Somebody, come on. Come on. Come on. Rebanse, keep speaking the tongues. Wait a second. Somebody has a court case either coming up or is going. Who has a court case that's coming up or going? The Lord said that you're going to have favor in that court case because you're his son. You have everything you need you're going to have. Hold on. Who in here has been praying to have a child but can't? Who is it? Come over here. Come receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Roman Sataki Yarababose. Be healed in Jesus' name. 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 Full healing in Jesus' name. Robabase. Key and Ababose. no mosoto corobo city. Be healed in Jesus' name. Arabasa namasa. Be healed in Jesus' name. Arabasa namasa. Arabasa namasa. Arabasa namasa. Arabasa namasa. Arabasa namasa. Full healing in Jesus' name. 
full healing in the name of Jesus. You will have a child, says the Lord. Two children, to be specific. Who in here has a cousin that's in trouble? I keep hearing cousin. Cousin. There's a cousin in trouble. There's a cousin in some form of bondage. Maybe you're praying for a cousin. I don't know. I keep hearing cousin, cousin, cousin. What's going on with your cousin? Witchcraft. A man. Okay, so receive that prayer for her right now in the name of Jesus. We prophesy tonight that she will have a fresh encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. A fresh encounter that you're going to go and you're going to pray for her. You're going to lay hands on her and break the demonic bondage that's on her in the name of Jesus. Receive who here has a mother that's very sick, very ill? Your mother's very ill. Come over here. Look at me. After today, you and your mother will no longer be in that bondage that your grandmother put you guys through. But you have to be the one to break that generation of curse. So after today, no more. In Jesus' name. Full healing right now. Full healing in the name of Jesus. A long time ago and you never pursued it but the Lord Jesus says that he gave you those healing hands when you were in the womb so use those hands to heal people although you didn't use it in the world you still use it in the spirit give me your hand receive that healing in Jesus name close your eyes close your eyes close your eyes right now in the name of Jesus be blessed be healed and also use these hands for you to heal over people in the name of Jesus receive your blessing in Jesus name stir it up 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 doesn't have those things because the, the because the blood of the lamb has covered a multitude of sins she doesn't have those Ooh. things anymore the devil is a liar in our word the, the word of God never says that she has any of those sickness so I need you right now to believe it so when you go back home for you to speak it to your mother in the name of Jesus I pray for an increase of faith for you woman of God so that you can lay hands on your mom and you increase her faith as well breakthrough is happening in your house tonight as we are speaking tonight the Holy Spirit is at her house healing her every sickness every disease be gone in Jesus name <laughs> The Lord said, I'm doing a new thing tonight. Because my children have broken hearts. They're broken hearted. But I stay close to the broken hearted. I stay near to the broken hearted, says the Lord Jesus Christ. So everybody that feels like they really have a broken heart, something happened to you that really caused your heart to be broken, that you don't feel close to the Lord Jesus, line up right here to receive your heart to be filled with the spirit of the living God tonight. Look at me. The Lord said everything you've done, I already forgot it. 
you are my precious daughter I already forgot every single thing so there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus so you take your righteous place in heaven today in Jesus name be filled be filled be filled in Jesus name be filled in Jesus name be filled be filled in Jesus name be filled in Jesus name, be
worship among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua come on everybody Call out his name. Open up the heavens gates with your worship. Yeshua. Yeshua. something guys we could all be in this building together does that mean we're in unity no we have to be in one accord look I'm gonna say something a social media following means nothing listen to me don't idolize man the only one we idolize is Jesus Christ for real so as we're worshiping, if you're too busy looking up here and not looking in heaven at Jesus, you're wrong. Repent. If we all can come in one, in one accord, this place will shake, like in the book of Acts. Amen. How many people got saved on the day of Pentecost? 3,000. Right now, there's 2,000 people here, outside and inside together. We can shake the place. I looked in the spirit and I seen a heavenly portal open. I seen angels ascending and descending, descending right here. There's a portal. The Lord has allowed that. That means deliverance, healing, all that's going to break out for his people. In order for that to happen, at the rate that we want it, Jesus Christ needs to be glorified. The angels worship Jesus. We're called to worship Jesus. In spirit and what? So y'all ready to, to worship Yeshua? So I want everybody close your eyes and put your hands up. Focus on Jesus. Algo grande va a pasar 
pasar Se activa lo sobrenatural Hoy se siente, se siente Estás aquí y se siente Tu gloria en este Cantamos Yahweh Yahweh Rafa Elohim Shaddai Chile Adonai Se manifesta Today is the day that we get up out, out, of, out, of, out of our grave today. We're going to get out of the grave today. No more in bondage. No more in bondage. Because he gave us the keys. So we're going to get up out of our grave today. You know why? Because hell lost another one and we're free today. Hell lost another one and we're free today. So I need you to sing this with me. Heal us another one. I am free. I am free. I am Come on, clap. Heal us another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Come on. Heal us another one. to show them how we do it back in at the Rock Orlando. We got to show them when you are no longer in when you are no longer in bondage that means that there's no shackles on your feet. There's no shackles in your hands. So why do I see people standing around stiff? Did hell really lose another one? Did hell really lose another one? Because when hell lost another one, that means that I can dance around freely like I want to and worship the Lord Jesus Christ like I want to. So hell lost another one. I am free. Come on, everybody. I am free. Come on. I am free. Hell lost another one. I Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that get up, get up, get up, get up out of that get up out of that grave. Come on, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that Come on, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Hell us another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell us another one. I am free. I am free. I need you guys to give a shout of praise to Jesus. Give a shout of praise to Jesus. Give a shout of praise to Jesus. Hey. Who wants to be used by God to win souls? I'm going to pray something real quick. I'm going to pray an impartation right now. Amongst the atmosphere, even outside. That the Lord would impart what you need to go win souls. You know. You know what you need? You need brokenness. You need to be broken. You need to be dead to yourself. You need to love Jesus Christ so much that everywhere you go, you want to preach his gospel. You want to help his people. You want to love others as yourself. 
You see, people think I can impart boldness. But you know what I pray for now? Brokenness. That you would die to yourself. That you would die to this world. That you would die to your flesh. That you would die to the, the sin. That you would hate sin. And love righteousness. Amen. So I'm gonna put your hands up if you want this impartation. It's a breaker's anointing. The Lord told me to release this to the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, for every brother and sister putting their hands up. Lord, that you would break them. A breaker's anointing, Lord. You can see and the angels can see right now. The Bible says what we see is temporary. What we don't see is eternal. So, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would impart right now, Lord, what they need to break. I pray that you begin to purify them. Burn them up, Lord. So that they'll come back finer than they were before, like gold. Assign the angels needed, Father. Thank you for this angelic operation here right now. For your saints, in Jesus' name. And the church says together. Amen. And the church says together. Amen. And the church says together. Amen. Hallelujah. Hold on, hold on. What I want to do real quick. I know there's not a lot, there's not a lot of seats. Do y'all care about seats? No. All right. I want to teach about the works of an evangelist and why you guys should, should, want, should want to evangelize. Look, you don't, need, you don't need to be an ordained evangelist to evangelize. And for the Bible thumpers, which is good, we should use the word of God. I love the word of God. That's the way we fight. What did Paul tell Timothy? Do the works of an evangelist and Timothy was a pastor. Whoa. What did Jesus say? Go preach the gospel to all nations. Go preach repentance and the remission of sins. Luke 22. Why did Jesus say that? He calls everybody to evangelize. We need to get out of this only one day a month, one time a season when I go with my church with the... the, 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 the. No. Evangelism needs to be a lifestyle. Everybody say lifestyle. Lifestyle. Some of you say, but I got fear. You don't got fear. You're nervous. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is. So what are you going to do? Look, some of you in the world were real bold and real, real reckless. God wants you to be bold and reckless in the body of Christ. When you feel like, I need to speak to that person at the Walmart. But if I talk to them, are they going to reject me? Are they going to listen? I don't care because I love Jesus. Hey, how you doing today? We have to wake up, body of Christ. There's people out there dying and going to hell. Hell is real. Heaven is real too. When we're saved, our, we're seated in where? Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But we need to go grab our brothers and sisters too. We're only here for a short amount of time. Life is not long. There's nothing in the world that can fulfill you. You guys know my testimony. I come from all the stuff. I don't want to even glorify it. I hate it. But I use it to win souls. The testimonies that I have in Jesus Christ are better than any demonic testimony. The miracles I've seen. The families that I've seen restored. Marriages restored. Diseases casted out of people. Demons casted out of people. People who are schizophrenic. Leaders in the church now. Casting out demons. People who were labeled bipolar threw away their medication. People who couldn't sleep at night. Now binding up demons and casting them out in the name of Jesus. Look, all of you are called to cast out demons and heal the sick. Mark 16, 17. These signs shall follow those who believe. They will cast out demons. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll raise the dead. Take up poison. It will do no harm. That is your inheritance body of Christ. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? We need to wake up. We need to stop thinking that we're bound. If you need deliverance, you get delivered. Then you go in your freedom. If you need more, guess what? No Jesus will do it the closer you get to him. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Yeshua. Look, let me tell you something. You don't
don't need nobody else. Jesus will give everything you need to you. When you seek his kingdom and all his righteousness, he will add all the things that you need, not what you want. Because what you think you want right now might not be what you need. When you stop thinking, what does the Bible say? His thoughts are not our and his ways are not ours so where can we learn about the mind of God in his word so when we stop thinking about our own stuff and we just we just put everything that the Lord thinks in our mind we just saturate our brains with the word of God what happens we become more like Christ and then we move in his power and then we have his peace we have his love we have his joy some of you are still stuck on the little issues and you can't forgive you can't forgive why can't you forgive why can't you forgive raise your hand if you're dealing with unforgiveness raise your hand look I'm going to tell you something you can put your hand down I'm going to say something before I came here today I said Jesus I have a heart to pastor these people I want to pastor them there's so much I have to give he said son do everything you can but you can't do it all because you're only here for a certain amount of time, right? Because back at the Rock Orlando, we take discipleship and accountability very seriously. We are, we are a family and we fellowship. We love each other. We eat bread. We break bread together. We cry together. You understand? That's how the body of Christ needs to be. And the Lord, on this assignment here in Houston, the Lord told me, I want my people to forgive because if they don't forgive, I cannot forgive them. Some of you are bound in demonic spirits because you're, 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 you're jailed up. You're, you're, you're handed to the tormentor. The book of Matthew says if you can't forgive, you'll be handed to the tormentor. There is no reason for you not to forgive. If someone can tell me the benefit of unforgiveness, I will drop this mic, go back to Orlando and never pastor again. There is no benefit. Unforgiveness keeps you bound. Yes. Have you hurt people? Yes. Have you hurt somebody before? Yes. Do you remember all the times you hurt somebody? Yes. You right there with the, with the Houston hat. Do you remember every single time you hurt somebody? Every single time. It's impossible. We don't. We can't remember it all. You know why? Because we don't care as much. Because as humans in our flesh, we're selfish. We hurt people, oh, they'll be all right, and we keep it pushing. But when someone hurts us, we can't forgive, though. How dare them, right? But when we realize it has nothing to do with me, you, or anybody here, it has everything to do with Jesus, and he was the ultimate sacrifice, he came down to forgive our sins, that will release all unforgiveness. No matter what happened in a marriage in the past with a woman, no matter what happened with, with a, a son or daughter, or a family member. Look, let me say something. Rape and molestation is more common than y'all know. And it's not just women. It's men too. Look, what they did was wrong. Obviously, we know that. But we have to release forgiveness. Look, there are generational curses. There are demonic operations. There are things that happen because of sin. God knew this when we were in heaven. Look, the Bible says what in the book of Jeremiah? He knew us before. We were formed in our mother's womb. We once knew him in heaven. We come. Our spirit comes from God. You understand me? He knew we were strong enough for this mission. Some of us were sent by Yahweh here in that bloodline to be the one who breaks the curse. You know how I know? Because I was. I never knew my purpose in the world. I never, I never understood it. Always trying to do something new always trying to look for another thrill because my spirit was seeking God but the devil was keeping me blinded that's why I sold drugs let me tell you something I used to move weight in Houston many 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 pounds of weed my first cousin on my dad's side who me and him sold drugs together in Houston we ended up dividing and beefing because of a simple transaction where he owed me, he owed me money and it wasn't, it wasn't $10, okay? And we divided the same curse that our fathers had. You know what happened? He got saved. 
And you know what else? He's filled with the Holy Ghost. And guess what? He's here today. Eugene, where you at? He's been guiding some of you guys in and you don't even know it. A humble servant. The guy in the front on the mic or the, the speakers. I think he's out there right now still, is he? But the tattoos, they got the love. We used to be beefing. God broke the generational curse in our family. Let me tell y'all something else. My best friend that I was raised with since I was in middle school. Best friend. I've been praying for him for the last few years. That him and his wife would receive the Holy Ghost. They would, they would get saved. And I came out here and the Lord said, I want you to mess. Come up here, come up here, Eugene. And, I, and I, I, the Lord said, hallelujah, come up here, man. And I messaged him. He lives in Houston now. We're from Broward County, Florida. We're from Broward. I messaged him. He responded, but he wasn't really interested, right? It was kind of like a, uh, doing his thing. He's busy. Has a family, right? Yesterday, I'm going to preach at a conference, right? And what happens? As I'm about to go up the elevator and center, what is it called? The North Center, center City Conference Center. Guess who pops up out of nowhere? My friend from high school. Oh! oh he's right there! With his beautiful wife. Let's give it up for them. Come on. The only Asian kid on our basketball team. <laughs> was good though still is but I want, I want to encourage y'all with miracles that's a miracle he couldn't deny coming now before he might have been questioning it but now God said no you're coming my son because God loves him and he answers the prayers of the righteous you don't have to move a finger when you trust in Yahweh hallelujah some of you are praying for relatives to be saved I was praying too my family, my entire immediate family was not saved. Didn't want anything to do with what I was doing, what I was doing. Mother Catholic, dad super lukewarm, not saved. My brother looked at me and said, wait till you find out Jesus isn't real. Multi-million off of cryptocurrency, big old warehouse in Tesla. The man, the, the man. Three years later, what happens? My brother, came, God brought my brother to my house to get delivered from demons and baptized in my pool. My, my, my mother, my Catholic mother who said she'll never get baptized because she was already baptized, came to the church, got baptized. My father rededicated his life to Christ, never thought a Christian could have a demon, got delivered from demons in my car. I trust in our Heavenly Father. I'm saying this to encourage you guys. God is real. He's alive. And he is with you. And he's inside of you. He's not far away. But you need to seek him. Everyone say seek him. You have to get close to him. He wants a relationship. He's jealous. He will not allow you, man of God, on the white t-shirt that's been questioning things. He will not allow you to think that you could just be, seek God in church and do whatever you want. Or my mom and my dad, like, you know, whatever. And I'll be all right. He'll come get me when he know. He already came for you. He wants you to seek him. He wants you to go ask questions. He wants you to speak to him like a friend. God doesn't want you praying a religious prayer. You know what? I said that yesterday at the conference. You know, some people pray, Lord God. Father, bro, let me tell you something. If my, my dog, Joel, if I'm talking to my friend, Pastor Joel, I'm not going to say, Joel, how you doing today? We're going to the store. Why would I do that? I'm going to say, what's up, my brother? God bless you, Pastor. How you doing? Everything good? You want to go who? All right, let's go. Because that's my friend. God wants you to speak to him like a friend. We're going to break religion tonight. We're going to break religion tonight. That's the principality I saw over Houston, Texas. Religion. A lot of people saying they're saved when they're not. A lot of people thinking because they got baptized when they were a baby that they're going to heaven. Your water baptism don't save you if your heart's far from God. 
Many people profess Jesus. Gee, oh yeah, of course. I believe in Jesus. Of course. Living in the world. Getting drunk. Getting high. Fornicating, watching porn, thinking it's all good. Fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Drunkards will not inherit. Am I wrong or am I right? right? That's the Bible, right? I believe the word of God face value. I believe it. You can't tell me it's not real. So tonight we're gonna repent. Ooh. Hey, we're gonna confess our sins and we're gonna repent and forgive. Because when you break those chains, devils come out. There's something called legal rights. Everyone say legal right. The Lord showed me this. He said, son, the demons and the angels submit to my word. Demons can't enter you until you go against God's word. Angels move and serve you off of God's word. That's the Bible. That's why it's the sword of the spirit separating bone and marrow, soul and spirit. There you go. We have to know it. If you don't know this, you're going to be a victim. And the Bible says, my people will die for lack of... Oh, but knowledge puffs up in, in love. Yeah, of course. If you got a bunch of knowledge with no love, you become a Pharisee. The Bible also says, knowledge what? Delivers. It's in the book. Pull it out, Pastor. He's going to read the scripture to you. The Bible literally says that knowledge delivers. Did you know that? Thank you. So I want you guys to have knowledge tonight. You didn't come here to see a show. I'm not going to dance around and so you can be like, whoa, look, at that's so cool. I've seen him on Instagram. I don't care. I want you guys to have a deeper revelation of Jesus Christ. Y'all want that? I'm telling you, it ain't me, it's Jesus. If he could take a drunkard, fornicator, liar, thief, you name it warlock and turn him into a, a man of God I don't even get it sometimes I just say thank you Jesus he can do it for you and he don't want you just sitting in the pews too many pew sitting Christians don't put in no work when faith without works is dead you go to church amen you don't need the mic every time not everybody's called to have a mic in the church. You know where the best pulpit is? The streets. That's where we take it, to the streets, to the highways and byways, to the Walmarts and Home Depots, to the Publixes and Sam's and Costco's, to the gas station, to your homeboy and homegirl's house, to your family's crib. That's where we take the gospel. Because you know what? People in the church are supposed to be saved. You see what I'm saying? So why are we so used to religiosity, man? Why are we so used to religion? Why, why is the world, why is the body of Christ think it's okay? Tradition, cycles, patterns. Oh, my mother and my dad were saved, so I'm, I'm, I'm saved though. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to go to the club at the same time. I'm going to hit the club right after church and get drunk. You can't do that. I, you can't. Look, I was the biggest drunk. I pop bottles in the club almost four days a week. Drug dealer mollied up in the club. I'm telling you, I was bad. I don't go to the club anymore. I go to the club to preach outside. You won't see me getting drunk in the club. You see, holiness and purity. Everyone say purity. Say holiness. That's what we strive for. We're righteous by the blood of Jesus. Amen. But people say, oh, well, you you just condemning me. You're just, trying to, you're just trying to judge me. Look, the Bible says we are allowed to judge within the body of Christ. So if you tell me I'm your brother in Christ and I'm saved, but you're doing the opposite thing, I can say, my brother, you need to repent. You're wrong. Because open rebuke is better than secret love. The wound of a friend is faithful, but the kiss of an enemy is deceitful. So if I say, hey, bro, keep smoking that dope, you good. This guy going to hell. I'm your enemy. But if I say, bro, turn away from your sins, because you're going to go to hell, bro. You're working sin right now. Okay, that might sting and hurt him, but it's going to save him in the long run. 
I will preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ to the day I die. We're not doing this for fame. We're not doing this for money. We're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing it because we're radical Jesus lovers. Who's a radical Jesus lover? Let me hear you scream Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me hear you scream Jesus. Hallelujah. to do is we're going to confess and repent and even for the people outside hey look people outside I'm not just staying in here we going outside too I don't care about the sun I don't care what that mean I used to play basketball in the sun for hours with him I don't care we gonna go out there and get dirty we gonna cast devils out in the street too we coming out there don't worry look, we thought this was gonna be a 300 person event at the park and got out of the plans God definitely had other plans. We didn't know it was going to be this many people. So we're going to work with what we got. Amen. All right. So what I want to do is I want to say this. Look, if you're that person that felt convicted as I was preaching and you said, man, that's me. I'm smoking. I'm drinking. I can't. I'm doing all these things. And you know you need to give your life to Christ tonight. Today's the day. We got baptism tubs in the back ready for you. We got baptism in the back ready for you. You don't have to get a big ceremony and certificate to get baptized. Baptism is when you understand what it is and you do it. You, understand? you need to understand what baptism is. So out there, they're going to explain how you die with Christ, you rise with Christ, how your conscience is washed, how you come up a new creation in Christ, how you're dead to your sins. Amen. They're going to break it down out there. Some of you got baptized as a baby. That ain't baptism, man. You couldn't, the Bible says what? Repent, believe, then be baptized. How can you repent and believe when you don't have the cognitive ability to do it? It don't make sense. So you need to go back there and get that gospel, get that, the, the revelation of baptism, and go under that water. And they're going to pray for you, and you're going to receive your gift of tongues. Whatever happens, deliverance is going to break out. This is revival. Revival is not a show. Revival is resuscitating the body of Christ. Because people are dying. People are sick because of sin. Did you know that? People are sick because of lack of knowledge. People are bound to devils because of lack of knowledge. So now you're going to get delivered, healed. After that happens, you need to seek Jesus Christ. I'm going to be going through the crowd casting out devils. I'm not going to have time to counsel you. There's a lot of people that need prayer. But listen to me right now. Everybody listen, please. After you leave here tonight, you need to seek Jesus Christ. You need to pray. You need to read. You need to worship. If there's anything I preach tonight, please, I beg you. We are in the end of times where pedophiles are being accepted into the LGBTQ community. Where little kids can leave their parents because they want to be the opposite sex. Where witches and warlocks are having a field day through the music industry, through business, all over the place. And the body of Christ has the most power, but we're so used to just depending on somebody else. I'll just depend on my pastor. No. The remnant is rising. The remnant is rising. And we're going to fight. We're not going to back down to the agenda of the devil. We're not going to take the mark of the beast. We're not going to sit back and get beat up. No, we're going to pray. We're going to move in power. And the body is going to show the world that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that there's no other way to heaven. Not Buddha. Not Muhammad. Not Ganesh. No, you cannot make it to heaven through Islam. If there's people in here that don't, you can probably, no. No, I studied Islam. I studied Buddhism. I studied witchcraft. I studied all these things. And the last thing I studied was Jesus. And that's when I got filled with his spirit. I didn't find Jesus in the Catholic Church. They don't teach you nothing. Some of you are going to encounter Jesus today and your life is going to change. 
completely. You'll never forget this revival. Amen. Some of you are going to be marked by Jesus today. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you guys the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of God on the salvation. This is how you get saved. Okay. Body of Christ. Another thing. How are we going to say we're saved when we don't know the gospel? I'm going to say it again. How can you say that you're saved when you don't know the thing that saves you? People don't know the gospel, man. You know how many people in public I evangelize to? Hey, you say, oh, yeah, of course, I'm a Christian, bro. I go to Christ. Okay, what's the gospel of Jesus Christ? I, I don't know. He died on the cross. For my, so why did a man die on the cross for your sins? If I go on the cross right now and die for you, can I save you? Oh, hey, you got a good point. I don't know. Yeah, because you ain't saved. Tonight, people are going to really be saved. Y'all want that? All right. Everyone say good news. Say good news. The gospel is good news, and it's of Jesus Christ. There's many gospels in the Bible. The gospel of healing, the gospel of deliverance, the gospel of forgiveness, the good news. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power that brings you to Jesus to be saved. You need to be reconciled back to your father. Everyone say reconciliation. I'm going to give you guys an example because you know what? Sometimes as Christians, we can use these big words from the Bible and people don't even know what it means. I guarantee you half the people in here have no idea. Look, at, let's be real. Who doesn't know what reconciliation means? Keep it 100. Don't lie. You see? Hey, more, one, if it was just one, I still, that's a lot of people. Pastor Benji, come here real quick. So I'm going to give you guys an example. This is my friend that I love so much. Right? Now, I backstab him. Boom. We're not friends. What are we? Divided. Now, now watch this. Hey, man, I'm sorry. Do you love me? Love you. We're back together. This is called being reconciled. So, if I'm being reconciled, man of God right there, yeah, you. If I'm being reconciled back to my heavenly father, what does that mean? I once knew him. When? Before I was formed in my mother's we come from heaven, my brothers and sisters. So we need to come back to heaven. We need to go back. We were sent here. Now what happened? Adam and Eve. People think, oh, Adam and Eve is this cartoon. You know, this guy. No, Adam and Eve were the first human beings. They were real. They were real, bro. And they didn't look like what you see in cartoons. They were the first humans. Just imagine that, okay? Adam and Eve. Adam was first. Eve was second. And what happened? They fell in the garden. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They weren't supposed to. They were, you, know, you know Adam and Eve were perfect, right? They were perfect and then they fell. Isn't that crazy? They knew God and they fell. Who also knew God and fell? The angels. That means God gives us all free will. God does not control us. We're not robots. Amen. Listen up. Y'all need to listen up. Amen. So, because Adam and Eve fell, they were put under a curse. These bodies of flesh had to till from the ground, meaning that Adam has to work now to eat. Eve, childbirth, woman of, woman of God in here. Isn't it crazy? You ever think about why you have to give birth and go through all that pain? Like, is even, like why, right? All that blood, all that. It's because of what Eve did. It's a curse. That's why we have death. Sin and death was allowed into the world through the sin of Adam and Eve. So now we come from that bloodline. Amen. The Bible says there's a second Adam who came. Right? Jesus Christ. Adam, the first one, brought what? Death. Jesus Christ came to bring life. Let's talk about how. So all these people after Adam and Eve, that bloodline, went through so much they went through rebellion. They went through sin. They went through betrayal. They went through all the things that we go through and had to deal with the flesh and had to deal with death. Is that a spiritual law or not, man, a God in the back with the hat? Does everybody die? Can anybody live forever? Now listen. So the prophets would prophesy about the, the Messiah to come. It's called Messianic prophecies. They would speak about the Messiah to come that was going to free us all. And the people would be waiting, 
when's he coming? When's he coming? Man, this prophet keeps talking about the Messiah. Man, I don't want to wait and keep tithing my, my food and, and my animals. I'm going to go to Baal. I'm going to go to Molech. I'm going to go to these false gods, voodoo, because it's quicker. And they would go to the voodoo gods, and the prophets would have to bring them to repentance because these people would be put under bondage. God would allow them to be enslaved to their enemies. Right? It's the Bible. They went through that cycle. Everyone say quick. Because human, as humans, we always want a quick fix. It's the flesh. McDonald's is quick, right? Taco Bell, quick. If it takes too long, I don't want to be there. I don't want to sit down. Because we want quick things. So, all those years passed by. Prophets talking about the Messiah to come. Finally, there was a baby born of a virgin. How crazy is that? A baby, a child was born of a virgin. It's not even possible. Because God wanted to prove through Mary, and we honor her, but we don't worship her, that through Mary, we don't pray to Mary. Don't ever pray to any, any human that's dead. That's, that's necromancy. Don't do that. That's a sin. That's what they do in voodoo. So what happened? Born of a virgin, right? God came into this world through his son, Jesus Christ. Why? Because nobody can enter this physical realm without a body. Nobody can enter. We're all spirit beings. We all have a soul, spirit, and body, right? God is triune, right? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but he's one. So God revealed himself, an all-powerful spirit, all-knowing everywhere at once, through the man God, Jesus Christ. You want to know what God looks like in the flesh? Look at Jesus. You want to know his personality? Look at Jesus. Jesus is a revelation of God in the flesh. Everyone say flesh. So, born into the world, just because he was the man God, Jesus Christ, does that mean that he just knew everything when he was a baby? No. He had to learn. He had to go into the temples and train. He had to seek his heavenly father. And he went through everything we've been through, bullying, rejection, betrayal. The, the attacks of lust, but he never sinned. Never. Because he was on assignment. Even since a little boy, he knew. And what happened at 30 years old? Baptized in the Jordan River. And the Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove. The Holy Spirit is not a bird. Everyone say, the Holy Spirit is not a bird. But the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. Boom! And anointed him with power. And now he started his ministry. And what did Jesus Christ of Nazareth do? Did he go around saying, just love everybody. It's okay, I love, I just do whatever you want. Love, 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 love is love, love is love. No. He came saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. Raised from the dead. And then what did he say after that? Those who believe, what? Will do greater miracles. He said, they'll do, they'll do greater miracles than me. His ministry was only three years. We have the opportunity to have a ministry for way longer than that. Catch that revelation. So, three years he went around moving in power, proving supernaturally that he was different, that he is the Messiah. Many believed and many didn't. The ones who didn't believe were the religious people, the Pharisees, the ones whose hearts were far from God to begin with. The ones who dressed in the nice expensive clothing and looked holy, praying on the corners for everybody to see him. Wanted to be known to be religious, putting yokes on people, controlling people. How many people have ever experienced a pastor who doesn't disciple? A pastor who doesn't hold people accountable? A pastor who doesn't care about the flock? But they want to be known and they want, their, they want your money and that's it. Oh, yeah, you can come to the church. You got your girlfriend. You, 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 hey, hey, man, God, you got a girlfriend. Oh, that's amazing. Hopefully you guys get married one day. You come to the Rock Orlando. You guys have seen it. You come to the front with a girlfriend, boyfriend. I'm going to say first things first. Yeah, you probably got demons. It's because you're in fornication. Repent. The Bible says we flee from fornication. You should, that's what God is doing, though, in this end times. He's rising up apostles and prophets who are going to stand for the truth. So Jesus stood for the truth. The Pharisees did it. Three years go by. He said, it's time. I got to go and fulfill all the prophecies about me. He had to get betrayed by Judas. And he had to go up on the cross. He was whipped. He was lashed. He was scourged. A crown of thorns in his head. He went through the most excruciating physical pain than any of us, that any of us could ever go through. It was real. And then spiritually, 
He went through the most extreme spiritual torment that any of us can go through. He took all the sins and sickness of the world on his back. A perfect man. Never sinned. Doesn't deserve it. All of us deserve to go to hell. The wages of one sin is death. But he never did. He did it for us. And then he went on the cross. Nailed to the cross. And he said it's finished. And he died. And the Bible says that every principality and power was disarmed on the cross. That means every devil lost now. And then he took the keys from Satan of hell and death. Now no one goes to hell or dies without the, without the approval of Jesus Christ, right? What's going on back there? What's going on? Bring him to the front. Bring him up here. Everyone say Jesus. We cast out demons in Jesus' name. We heal the sick in Jesus' name. Back her up, please. Back her up. Stand up. Stop, 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 stop. In the name of Jesus, every spirit be bound. I bind every devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring her up, please. Bring her up, bring her up, bring her up. Come on, someone help her. Jemiah. Hey, don't pray, please. Stop, stop, man of God. Order. Mario, come up, Mario. Help, help out. Hey, look at me. I command every demon to go down. Janiah, come up. Janiah, that's her name, Janiah. Jemiah. Jemiah, look at me. It's okay. Jemiah, look at me. You, Jemiah. No demon can control you. I bind every unclean spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Jemiah, look at me. Jemiah, look at me. Look at me. Look at my eyes. It's okay, Jeremiah. Every unclean spirit go down in the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot, nope, no more tormenting. It's okay, look at me, look at me, no. I command any spirit choking her in the name of Jesus Christ to be bound. Because the Lord's telling me for you, look, look, look. Do you want to be freed, Jeremiah? Do you want to be freed? I can cast the demon out, but there's more demons than the one that's manifesting right now. And the only way the entire operation is going to come out is if you repent. Do you want one demon out, or do you want them all out? I want to go home. Look at me in my eyes. You can't look at me in my eyes. It's okay. Do you need to forgive anybody? Jemiah. Jemiah, right? Jemiah? Jemiah? It's okay. Look, I want to get all the demons out. Do you want that? Do you want that? Okay. Put your hand on your stomach. We're going to get some demons out real quick. Hold her. Every unclean spirit, come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demon, come out. Everything that's bothering her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ow! Ow! Every witchcraft spirit, leave. 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 Ow! All the way. Ow! I command the strong man. Nope. I bind the strong man in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command every spirit of depression and witchcraft that's keeping her bound to leave. Leave. You cannot stay. Come out the mouth. Leave. Every snake in the, in, the, in the throat right now in the name of Jesus, unwrap and come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Leave. Leave. Yes. You have to go. Every demon go down. Jemiah, come up. Listen to me. Look at my eyes. You have to. They have, they have a legal right over your life. Do you want to get delivered from everything? Only a few came out. Do you want the whole thing out? <coughs> That's what we're going to do. Deaconess Mia's behind you. She's going to counsel you. I could just sit here. Come out. Yeah, we're done. No, there's more. Do you want full deliverance or do you just want to show? What do you want? Do you want to be freed or do you just want to stay bound? Tell me. I'm your brother in Christ. Deaconess Mia, minister to her real quick and then she'll get delivered. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Demons can only come in through legal right. I can sit there and pray. She falls out. Yeah, she's delivered. Let me tell you something. She's not. Because she'll leave here and continue to be bound. That's demons manifesting because they want to have a show. 
but we're going to continue this gospel. Y'all ready? Listen. So Jesus Christ gets scourged, whipped last. Everyone say whipped. Scourged. And y'all know there was a nine tails whip put in his back. One lash of a nine tails whip, I don't think anybody in here would be able to take it. He suffered spiritually and physically. Did he ever complain? Did he ever stop and say, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this no more? No, because he loves us, he knew there had to be a human sacrifice and a perfect human. So God came in, spirit, God of spirit, came into a human vessel, was perfect. Now, why blood? Why, why did he have to die? Because everyone say blood equals life. It's a spiritual law. You know why? You can't live without blood and everything flows through your blood. Am I wrong or right? And everyone say sin is death. So our father Yahweh made this law. For sin, blood needs to be atoned. Blood washes sin. There needs to be blood when there's death, right? That's why they would sacrifice animals in the Old Testament. At, you know, did you know that? They would sacrifice animals in the Old Testament for the blood of the sins of Israel. Did you know that? So, the animals that they sacrificed wasn't enough. There needed to be one last sacrifice. And Jesus Christ said, I'm going to do it. Went up on the cross, died, rose from the dead on the third day. Nobody believed he was the Messiah until he rose. Lazarus rose from the dead on the fourth day, but Jesus had to pray for him. Who prayed for Jesus to be rose up? Nobody. You know why? Because he was perfect. He overcame death. He knocked that, that demon of death. He haymakered that demon and knocked him out. He won. And then he was on the earth for 40 days, discipling his disciples, showing himself onto them. And then he rose up past the clouds as they were watching. Imagine if you just seen your rabbi, your pastor, Walk on water, turn water into wine, raise the dead, die, rise, and then go past the clouds. You're going to believe whatever he has to say, right? And he told them, go wait in Jerusalem. Go tarry and wait to be endued with power from high. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And people are going to receive that tonight. Amen. So the good news is, have you sinned before? You ever lied? Have you ever cheated? Have you ever stole? Who in here has never stolen their life? You never stole nothing? You don't think so. I like how you said that. You don't, you don't know. Who in here has never lied? Raise your hand. If you raise your hand, you're lying right now. Guess what? One sin sends us straight to hell. But Jesus came to be perfect so that his blood can wash away all our sins. And we are washed by the blood of Jesus by grace through we are saved by grace us being a, being able to even be saved we don't deserve it grace means unmerited favor Jesus Christ opened up an ability for us to be saved and we don't deserve it and we are saved by grace but it's through faith we have to have faith in what he did all we have to do he did all that for us and all we have to do is say Jesus I believe that you did die on the cross. I believe you are my Lord, that you're my master, that you saved me by your blood that you shed. I believe you did. You did rise from the dead after being buried. And if you believe that and you turn away from all your other beliefs that you've made up in your mind, from all the worldly wicked ways, if you say I'm turning away in my mind and I'm saying I'm committing and surrendering my life to Jesus Christ, you know what will happen? The Holy Spirit will fill you. The power of God and it is not something that you question you know when you're filled with the Holy Ghost if you're filled with the Holy Ghost I want you to scream Holy Ghost scream Holy Ghost and you need the Holy Ghost you need the Holy Ghost if you don't have the Holy Spirit you ain't gonna make it you're gonna be doubting Jesus because a revelation of Jesus only comes by his spirit Jesus Christ cannot be revealed to you unless the Spirit of God reveals him to you. So you have to put blind faith into Jesus in the beginning and say, I'm putting my faith, I'm broken, I believe it. 
And once you put faith in in your, in your heart and you believe it for real and you confess it from your mouth, the Holy Ghost fills you. And then you're going to really believe more. You're going to have some more faith. And then God will start showing up in your life like never before. Who wants that? So today is the day. Don't wait till tomorrow. Some of you came with your parents and friends to see what happens. You're going to see demons casted out. People are going to get healed. Cool. We don't rejoice because the demons submit to our name. We rejoice because we are written in the book of life. We're going to heaven. This world, hey, this world sucks. If you know this world sucks, say it sucks. Say we're going to heaven. Say hallelujah. All right. So what we're going to do right now to start it off is a salvation call. Obviously, we don't have an altar to really do that. So what we're going to do is if you are giving your life to Christ, if let's say you were in the world and you left Jesus and you've been living lukewarm, you've been smoking and drinking and sinning, watching porn, adultery, and you have no conviction, you need to give your life back to Christ like the prodigal son. He will not condemn you. He will not say you're not worthy. He will say, thank you. Come back, my son and daughter. And he will love you more than you can even know. In your sin, he loves you. Out of your sin, he loves you. In him, it doesn't matter what you're doing. He loves you. But you have the free will to say, Jesus, I'm submitting to you to make it to heaven. So some of you need to submit to God again. Some of you were raised in the church and religion thinking that, oh, if I go to church every Sunday, I'm saved. Today it breaks. That religious spirit in Texas, man, I can't break it alone. I can't just go against the principality. Come down. If that was the case, I could go take over America in a week. Principalities drop when sin leaves the region. Demons are empowered by sin. So the principality over Houston is empowered by people's sin. God is calling everyone here to be a frontline soldier. We're going to take the darkness out and fill them with the light. And that's how we bring down principalities. Amen. First step is giving your life to Christ or rededicating your life to Christ. And after that, you need to go get baptized. Now, I'm going to say this real quick. If you got baptized as a baby and you didn't surrender to God, that wasn't baptism. You took a bath. You need to really get baptized with revelation and surrender. Amen. The Bible says there's only one baptism. And tonight, today is the day. Okay? All right. So if you need to give your life to Christ, I'm going to, we're going to pray and then I'm going to say raise your hand and I want you to raise your hand. Okay? Okay. And then right after that, I'm going to pray a little bit and if you need to get baptized in water, I'm going to need you to go directly to the back. We're going to have Deacon Carlos leading and, De and, and Pastor Mario leading people to the baptism tub. Amen. These two men of God right here. Let's give it up for the two men of God right here. Amen. So, everyone close their eyes and relax real quick. Put your hands down. Just close your eyes and focus. I don't want you to be nervous. I just pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, that you will convict and touch every heart that needs to be touched. I pray right now against any distraction. I pray against any doubt. Lord, the Bible says, come as you are. We don't have to come perfect. You make us perfect. You will give us the ability to continue to transform, renew, and change. So, Lord, touch every heart right now. If you need to give your life to Christ, keep your eyes closed. Raise your hand. Hi. If you're sitting down, stand up. Hallelujah. Everyone, open up your eyes. Look at all the souls that are about to be saved. Hey, and also, everybody on live right now, everybody on live that needs to give their life to Christ, I want you to put a one in the chat and we're going to count it up too. We're going to do a, a big soul count so we can edify the body of Christ, encourage the body of Christ. Souls are going to are saved tonight. Angels are going to rejoice. All right, everyone that was raising their hand, raise their hand real quick again. Keep both hands up and repeat after me. Both hands up. Say this. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. That you're the man, God. You are God. Wrapped in flesh. 
You're seated at the right hand of the Father. In your glorified body. You are perfect, sinless unto death. You died for me. You were buried, and you rose on the third day. Your blood washes all my sins. Right now I confess every sin I'm aware of and not aware of, and you forgive me. You forgive me of every sin. By your blood, I'm not guilty. I'm forgiven right now. I'm a man or woman of God. Right now, say, Jesus, I repent of all my wicked ways. I change my mind right now. And I turn to you right now. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone give it up for the new converts. Hallelujah. All right. Now, who needs to be baptized in water? Hey, even if you already gave your life to Christ a month ago, but you know you need to get baptized. All right. Go to the back. Let's get it. Hallelujah. Man, God. I love it, man. God bless you. What's your name? Rick. Ricardo. <laughs> what? Ricardo and Lorenzo. What's up, man? Ricardo Lorenzo. Your name is Ricardo Lorenzo. Ah, oh, man. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, for this young apostolic man of God, Lord, that you would impart everything that he needs, Lord. Thank you that he's a leader. Thank you that he'll be sent out in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, man. You look, you look like a young version of me, too. That's crazy, bro. You're only eight. Wow. God bless you, man of God. If you need to get baptized, I'm going to pray in a second. Everyone that needs to get baptized, please go to the baptism pool. And that's worship. We're about to do a mass deliverance. Mass deliverance, mass healing. Who's ready? Who's ready? Look at all the souls being saved, man. This is beautiful. This is what it's about. Everyone say it ain't a show. It's a Jesus party. Say it's a Holy Ghost party. Hey, um, armor bearers in the front. Romario, let more people in now because they're leaving. People out, out hey, I'm going to let y'all know outside. Everyone outside, I'm coming out there too. I see you peeking through the window. I'm coming. Whatever to glorify Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? We're going to pray. Devils will be casted out. And people will be healed. If y'all need to get baptized, please head to the back. And uh, Mario and, 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 uh, and uh, Carlos, please do it quickly, man. Hey, y'all, go out there quickly. Go ahead. Form a line outside. Just get through quickly. God bless you, man. A boy getting baptized. Come on. Hey. hey. Praise God. It's so cold in here, man. That was a joke. All right. I'm going to wait for them to come in. Amen. Hallelujah. I give it up for Jesus. Come on. Come on. Give him praise right now. So everything that was talked about right now is perfect. This is a time. It's perfect. It's perfect. The whole gospel. So now that you guys have received the gospel, you guys understand that Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, is always with you. So now you understand in a time of testing, in a time of trials, in a time of everything that is going on, it's an acknowledgement that Jesus is always with you now. He is always with you. Now you understand that you no longer have to move in fear. You no longer have to move in anxiety. You no longer have to allow the things of life to plague you anymore. Now you are truly free and you know who goes before you. You know who goes before you. Just like Moses said, I will not move unless you go before me. 
Now you know that your God goes before you so you can conquer any territory. Now you know that because your God goes before you, anything that tries to rise up against you shall fall in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord, Jesus Christ, he says, if you have faith, you can speak to the mountain and it shall fling itself into the sea. You can move every mountain by your faith, by your understanding. Amen? So now, today, after tonight, after tonight, is a true understanding that you guys need to acknowledge that God is always with you no matter where you are, no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what's going on. God is with you. He fights your battle. Everybody say, God fights my battle. God fights my battle. I am not defeated. I am victorious in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, so we're going to do something real quick. Everybody, even if people outside getting baptized, Pastor Joel, where are you at before we begin prayer? You got everybody ready? All right, real quick. Look, we're going to get into a mass deliverance, healing, all that. We're going to move. It's going to get crazy in a good way, okay? Y'all ready for that? So I'm going to say something. We came out here in faith. I got called out to a conference, a powerful mantles conference that was um, at the city, uh, the conference center, the Norris Conference Center. It was beautiful. It was good. I didn't think that I was going to have a revival, but the Lord told me in prayer a week and a half before, throw a revival, right? I thought, man, man there's going to be like three or 400 people. We'll just go to the park. It'll be fun. Until people started signing up. And then we got to 1,000 people that signed up in less than a few days. So I had to move quickly. And I just want to honor the people that allowed us to even rent this building last minute. They, they, have, they have food that they're going to be selling um, in the back, I believe. Food is going to be sold in the back over there in a second. But we just rented the spot, all the equipment, everything we did in faith. We just said we're going to do it for the Lord. The Lord's going to provide. Amen. Amen. So, yes, I'm going to tell you all something. Whenever you're in revival culture and you see souls being saved, demons being casted out, people being healed, you know who's moving. Jesus, right? This ain't, this ain't no lukewarm Christianity. This ain't no, this is, this, this is just a show so we could just scream and, and, and do that a, a bunch of, no. This is real deal Jesus in the Bible, right? So this is an altar. Everyone say altar. A heavenly altar unto the Lord. Now in the Bible, people would sacrifice unto altars, right? Everyone say sacrifice. You see, when there's religion, people hate giving. I know this because I used to be religious. I used to be like, don't give to the pastors. Don't give to the, the, let's just give to the poor until I started reading the Bible. And I seen that the Bible says, give double honor to a teacher. Give on to his, give on to the church, right? If you don't give on to God through tithes and offerings, what happens? You'll be cursed with a curse. I started reading. I'm like, man, that's why I'm going broke. And then when I caught it, I realized, wow, I was just tripping because I wasn't investing into God's kingdom. How you give matters. You're not, let me say something. I, I caught this revelation during a service the other night. I said this. I said, we fast and we pray in private because of intimacy with the Lord. The Lord does not want us fasting for other people to see, right? The Lord does not want us praying so everyone can say you're holy. Because if you do, that's, that's your reward. It's the same thing we're giving. We give with intimacy onto God. Through his church, through his, through, through the people of God from the kingdom. Amen. So we give unto God through his kingdom. Because right now you, you, you can't just go hear Jesus and give him, give him your sacrifice. And you know how you know it's sacrifice? Because you don't want to give up your money. It hurts. Today, I want to encourage all of you guys to sacrifice with excellence. This is going to go on to the next revivals that we're about to go do throughout the nation. We are going to California, Dallas, New York City. We are going all around the nation and then around the world. We're not stopping here. And we're not depending on nobody anymore to call me out. We're going to move in faith and we're going to use our own money to get our own conference centers, our own stadiums. Next time we come, right, woman of God, we get in a stadium. Next time we come in here, we get in a stadium. So I'm going to say this again. You're giving on to revival culture. You're not giving on to me, nobody up here. You're giving on to God, but you entrust me and the other leadership to steward God's finances. That falls on our head. 
if I decide to go spend money on the wrong things, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to get judged for that. Things could happen to me, my amazing, beautiful wife, and my three children. And I'm not letting that happen. It ain't happening. Amen. So, right now is an opportunity for you to give. I want you guys to give. I'm going to say it again. With excellence. Everyone say excellence. You're not giving for nobody. I'm going to tell you something. I don't even check the tithes and offerings of our church. I told my wife I don't even want to see it. Because sometimes people give to try to get me to shift and like them. That's manipulation and witchcraft. I don't allow it. You give on to God with revelation. Look, if you don't have revelation of what you're doing, you shouldn't even give. Because you're giving in vain. Everyone say give with joy. We give with joy because we know that God comes through when we give. Right? So everyone stand up. We're gonna, this, this is a holy moment. People don't like this. Religious people don't like this. I don't care. I believe in giving. I love giving. If you love giving, I want you to scream Jesus. Hey, you see how I wasn't that loud? <laughs> oh, the body of Christ will break from poverty, Pastor Benji. Will break from poverty. That's why a lot of people are bound in poverty because they don't know how to give. You cannot receive if you don't give. Even worldly people know this. It's a spiritual law that anybody can practice. Why do you think when you read self-help books, they use Bible scriptures? Because it's a spiritual law that God, the Bible doesn't say, if you're a believer, give. It says give, and how you give, you'll receive. And that's for anybody. That's deep, huh? And there's people in the world that are comfortable financially, but then the body of Christ is dealing with poverty. It's because people don't want to wake up. People are bound to religion and deception, and my people will die for lack of knowledge. So, if you're about to give tonight, I want you to scream Jesus. Even for the people outside. Even for the people by the baptism tub. Y'all ready? Put your hands up. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would put on their heart what they're supposed to give. I pray they give exactly what you want them to give, Lord. It's not about how much. It's how you give. Obedience. Holy Spirit, put it in their mind. Bless them, Lord. And I pray whatever they give, that you would bless them a hundred times fold according to what your word says, Lord. That if you give, if you sacrifice land, if you sacrifice anything for his name, he'll bless you a hundred times fold in this life and the life to come. So, Lord, bless them. And I pray that this sacrifice is pleasing, a sweet-smelling aroma unto you. In Jesus' name. And the church says together. Amen. And the church says together. Amen. All right. So, you guys see that? We passing around the little QR codes. Look, it was so last minute, we couldn't even get them on the TVs. So, we went to the Staples place and we printed out 400 of them. We tried to get 2,000, but they wouldn't allow us. So, look, if you need to give through Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, you can give right there. Find somebody with a piece of paper and give. If you're giving, if you're giving with um with cash, raise your hand and we got buckets that we're gonna come around and, and collect. And even for the people outside. And also, if you want to text to give, pull out your phone right now. If you're gonna text to give, pull out your phone and put it up so I can. Okay, cool. Text a dollar amount, like put money sign one two. This number eight four three two one. Eight four, three two one. Oh, I'm sorry. The amount you want to give. I'm sorry. The text the amount you want to give to eight four three two one. Again, eight four three two one. And even for everybody online, if you want to give, everything's in the description for giving. It's on the screen. You guys can see it. It's about to get crazy in here. I can feel it. If you want to text to give, it's 84321. Text the amount that you want to give to 84321. If you need to scan the QR code, raise your hand. All right, you done? Thank you. Here you go. Pass that back. There you go. Who else needs the QR code?
the glory. Oh, todo es para ti Y todo es por ti Oh, tú mereces gloria Hallelujah Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus And as 
you sing Yeshua, breakthrough is going to come. Deliverance is going to happen. Healing is going to manifest itself. He's going to show all of us here in this room his glory. So sing louder. Sing louder. Sing louder. Sing louder. Sing louder. Sing louder. Yeshua. Yeshua. Keep going, keep going. Yeshua. Come on, keep going. Yeshua, don't stop. Yeshua. Make it personal between you and Yeshua. It's a personal relationship in this moment. Those of you that are not singing, when you profess Yeshua out of your mouth, because his name is a strong tower, that thing that's keeping you bound is going to go. So open up your mouth and sing praises to the Lord. Sing out his name, Yeshua, because his name brings light. Yeshua.
Hallelujah. How many people are ice cold in here? Now how many people are hot? Holy Ghost hot. Holy Ghost fire. Everyone say Holy Ghost fire. Say Holy Ghost fire. Say it's revival. We are being revived by Jesus. All right. What we're going to do now is, a, is healing. Who needs healing? Raise your hand. Physical healing. What's about to happen right now is healing miracles are going to break out. Instant healings. So there's nine gifts of the spirit. Everyone say nine. Two of them are the gift of healing. And the other is the gift of the working of miracles. There's a difference between the two gifts. The working of miracles is instant, happens right now. A demon getting casted out right now. Healing breaking out right now. You see what I'm saying? Healing, the other gift, usually is a process. It might take time. The Bible says we are healed by his stripes. It is a fact. His word will never return to him void. When we release that into the spirit realm and we declare and decree it, you know what happens? It starts to work. It gets to action. Amen. Sometimes God will have you praying daily. How many people have been healed miraculously by God? Now listen to this. For those people raising their hand, raise your hand again if it took time. Now for all the people looking for healing, look around. Look at that. Now, if you were instantly healed by God, raise your hand. You see, there's a difference. People in here, some of the people in here need to know the word of God. God wants you to get in your word. He never puts sickness on you, but he wants you to battle in the spirit through his word. And it might take time. It might be a process. Everyone say process. process. What the Lord told me about tonight was that there was going to be miracles. Instant healings. Instant deliverances. Instant. Everyone say flesh, say soul, and say spirit. When we come to Christ, our spirit man is made perfect, but we still have a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. Everyone say, say mind, will, and emotions. That's our soul. Our soul needs to line up with the word of God. So while we're here on this earth, we're battling three enemies. The world, the satanic kingdom, and our flesh. So our soul is in constant battle with the flesh and the spirit. That's why Paul constantly says, what? Walk in the spirit, not gratifying the desires of the? So in order to walk in the spirit, you need to read his word. You need to pray in the spirit. You need to worship in spirit and truth. God gives us the, the, the keys. Everyone say keys to walking in the spirit. So when our soul is submitted to our flesh, that's when we do the things that the flesh likes. Like the drugs and sex, like the anger. All the unhealthy desires. Everyone say unhealthy desire. 
That's what lust means. Lust is not just sexual. You could have an unhealthy desire for cigarettes. You could have an unhealthy desire for alcohol. That's called lust. An unhealthy desire for fame. An unhealthy desire for money. An, un an unhealthy desire for food. You know what's unhealthy when you're putting it before God. When you idolize it. When you need it. Some people need to give up coffee tonight. Caffeine. You, 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 ever, you ever hear this? You ever hear this? I can't function without coffee. That's a word curse. You should be able to go throughout your day without coffee. That don't make sense. That means that your flesh controls you. But when you're submitted to the spirit of God, you can go a week without coffee and go right back. You see what I'm saying? When you're addicted to alcohol, what happens? Your flesh needs it. Demons work with the flesh. Demons work with the flesh. Everyone say that. So some of you say, I need deliverance. Yes, you do. But you also need to know how to put your, your flesh under submission to the spirit of God. Because if you don't know how to battle the flesh, amen. If you don't know how to battle the flesh, you're going to keep getting bound by demons. They're going to have a field day with you. And I said it again. Everyone say the word of God. Say worship. Prayer. Praise. Fellowship. These are five simple king kingdom principles that will help you stay submitted to the spirit of God and walk in the spirit. Amen. So with healing, your soul needs to believe that what the Bible says is true. That by his stripes we are healed. That he bore all our sins and sickness on the cross. You need to believe that Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. And with that being said, we have the resurrection power of Christ in us. No sickness and disease can dwell in us because we are hevacons, kingdom citizens. We tell the flesh what to do. But if you don't know that and you're just looking for a man or woman of God to just touch you, look, it can happen. I've seen people who don't even know Jesus at all get healed from a miraculous disease. God does what he does. He's sovereign. Everyone say sovereign. I mean, that means he's all-knowing. He does whatever he wants. We can't understand him. His ways are not our ways. Thoughts are not our thoughts. But he does give us ways to understand him in his word. Hallelujah. As you, as you grow in his word, you get to know more of who he is. But if you say you know God, I know Jesus so much, but you've never read his word. You don't have a relationship with him in his word. You do not know God. You've created your own God. Because the God I know, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, he wants us to read his word. Some of you say, I don't like reading my word. Guess what? You probably don't like going to work, but you still do. Why? Because you want money. So when you don't like reading the word, like I, when I first came to Christ, I didn't want to read the word, but I did it because I knew I needed to. You know what happened after that? My faith increased, and now I love it. Oh, but it's a witchcraft spirit. It ain't always a demon. It's probably you. But if it is, it's going to get casted out today, okay? So, do you believe that by the stripes that Jesus took that we are healed? If you believe it, say, I believe. Say, I believe. Now, praise God. Praise him. If you need healing, I want to see you move like you need healing. Jump around. Turn around. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Say, I am healed. Say, I am healed. Say thank you, Jesus. Now, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command. Mm, thank you, Father. Everyone say, Jesus, I confess all my sins to you. Now, take a minute right now and release out of your mouth what you need to confess. Don't worry about your neighbor because Jesus is listening. Right now, I'm looking, at, I'm looking through the crowd. Some of y'all just looking at me like, I ain't going to do that because you're too, you're too worried about me. You thinking it's me that's running the show. You tripping. It ain't me. It's Jesus. You just can't see him. Some of you can, though. <laughs> confess it all, man. The Bible says if you confess your sins to him, he is faithful to wash away all unrighteousness. You will be washed by his blood. The minute you confess, release it. You don't need to go to confess to a priest. You confess to the high priest, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, now say this. Say, Lord, I repent. Say, I forgive. 
everyone who's hurt me raise your hand if you need to forgive now right now I want you to say I forgive say the person's name out loud and say what they did to you out loud say it say I forgive so and so for so and so I forgive John for molesting me I forgive Sarah for stealing from, from me I forgive this person for this just say whatever it is forgive them I forgive my mother for not being in my life I forgive my father for not being in my life release it say I forgive him Lord now say I forgive and I release forgiveness say Lord I pray that you bless them say I love them in Christ I pray you heal them Lord deliver them Lord I release forgiveness Say it one more time. No, three times. Say, I release forgiveness. One more time. I release forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Now everybody clap for the Lord Jesus. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, again, raise your hand if you need healing. I'm going to pray right now. I want you to be able to measure your pain right now, wherever it is. Some of you might have an internal disease like you can't really measure a pain that's okay some of you might have physical pain like a lump we had a lady that got healed of a tumor on her breast the other night in the service we had a lady that got healed from 18 incurable diseases the other night so right now measure the pain one through ten measure it like and remember it it might be your back it might be your knees it might be your headache it might be a tumor it might be I don't whatever it is you know Remember it. Now, keep your hands up. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Yeshua, Lord, thank you, Father. I pray right now, full healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Full healing in the name of Jesus. Right now, from the top of the head to the heels of their feet, from the stomach to the back, inside and out, I rebuke and curse every disease in the name of Jesus Christ. Every autoimmune disease, every incurable disease, it's a lie. I break every word curse off of them by the doctors. I would break every lie, every, all doubt and unbelief be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command the pain to go to zero right now in Jesus' name. Everything go to zero. Everything. I feel the Holy Spirit strong. It's like an angel soaring like an eagle right now. Just seen it. Put your hands down. I want you to check yourself now if you had physical pain and see if you still got pain. Now, I want you to raise your hand if the pain just went down. Okay, amen. Hold on. If the pain just went completely away right now, raise your hand. Come up here and testify. Fred, bring them up one by one. Only physical pain. Don't come up here if you need deliverance. Don't come up here if you want. No. Please, respect. Come up here if you literally got physically healed. Right over here. Come in line to testify. Please let them through over there. They're trying to get through. One by one. Come here. Where'd you have pain? Right here on my knuckle. How bad? What was the pain? One through ten. It was like, yeah, 10, 11. It was bad, and right now you feel nothing. I used to not be able to bend it, but now I could like go off. So before you couldn't bend it. Let's give it up for Jesus. Pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that he's healed. I pray, Father, for this evangelist, Lord, that you called. This evangelist, Lord. Part, everything I have, Lord, double portion for what he needs. I heard the Lord saying, you're going to win souls. Soul winner. Prophetic evangelist. Stir up the gift of prophecy, Lord, in his mind. He has so much love, this dude. So much love. It's a loving dude right here. He can fight, but he's a loving dude. 
I heard it three times. The Lord wants you to prophesy. So I pray, Lord, that you increase and stir up the gift of prophecy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ah, you're special, man. You're going to win souls. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not bowing down to me. It's to Jesus. I'm just confirming the word of the Lord to him. Next. Yes, please. And Fred, Tyler and Fred, whenever he's done, just help him come up the station. What's, you look familiar. What's your name, man? Isaiah. Isaiah. And what'd you just get healed from? My throat. How bad was it, one through ten? An eight or a nine. And what do you feel right now? Nothing. Zero? Amen. I love it. Obviously, the name Isaiah is a prophet, right? Look at this. Names are very important, right? God, so obviously, look, he is called to be a prophet. And then I said, Lord, he's an end times prophet. And I look at this. His shirt says what? Future. Pray for you. Have you given your life to Christ? Yes. Have you received the gift of tongues? Yes. You speak Wait, no. In, no. You want to speak in tongues right now? Yes. I just told all the people out there, they just a bunch of people got baptized in the Holy Ghost out there. That was it was crazy. Do you want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues? I've already been baptized. In the Holy Spirit though. It's different. You know how when you went in water, you went all the way in the water? Mm-hmm. Now the Holy Spirit's gonna fully immerse you in his power. <laughs> So, in the Bible, when they received it, they would speak in tongues. It's a gift of the Spirit. It's faith. You just open up your mouth and you pray. And it doesn't, you don't know what it is, you just let it go. And the, because of your faith, the Spirit of God will fill you. You want to do it? Yes. You got faith? Yes. You sure? Yes. You sure? Yeah. All right, Isaiah. You Puerto Rican too? Yeah. Hey. You ready? Close your eyes. Relax. Say this. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Say, baptize me in your power. Baptize me in your power. Give me the gift of tongues. Give me the gift of tongues. The evidence of your power. The evidence of my power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, I'm going to pray, okay? And when I pray, you start praying with me. Relax. You don't have to worry. Come on. It's faith. Don't look at me. Focus on Jesus. You nervous? <laughs> all right. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to pray one more time. I feel led to. You ready? You going to try? We're going to all speak in tongues. Everyone in here. Together. You want to? You ready? Close your eyes. Relax. That's all praying the Holy Ghost. There you go. Louder. 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 There you go, Isaiah. Yes, secure about say alama. Reke to buruko sekete. Robo ko sekete. Reke se baraka sakata. Sekere bo soko to. Reke si alama so there you go. Loud. Si alama so. I hear what the wind is saying about the boss. I saw what the wind is saying about the boss. I saw what the wind is saying about the boss. God bless you, man. You got it. Good job. How do you was Isaiah? You're 11. Wow. Marked. Where was your pain at, my brother? What was the pain? One through ten. Four. Four. And it's completely gone. Yes. You don't feel nothing at all. No. Even when you bend down. No. You don't feel nothing. Try bending down. You feel anything? No. no. And you wouldn't lie, right? No. Because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Amen. God bless you, man of God. Come on, woman of God. You really just got healed, didn't you? Where was your pain at? Uh, my hip. How bad was it, one through ten? Uh, in that moment, it was like a four, but I ha- it battles with it. You know, sometimes depending on how long I stand, it can be more. So I and, and right now, what do you feel? Nothing. I... 
when you when you were coming up I heard the Holy Spirit say she really just got healed that's why I said it and you, you see why you're so emo- like you're, that's the presence of God you're healed I'm gonna pray for you actually come here come here baby we're gonna pray for her my wife's gonna pray for you Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that she's made whole right now. So, rabba, so, rabba, so. The Lord just told me to tell you, I want, he wants you to lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Like the one leper who came back. The one leper who came back, and I want you to praise him. Praise him right now. Jump up and down. Jump up and down. Jump up and down. There you go. You're made whole. It's not coming back. Hey, where'd you get healed? My knees. How bad was it? One through ten. Just jacked up. For five <laughs> years. I'm tired of it. For five years? About five years. This coming. Um, Could you bend down before? Uh, yeah, but it's just every always painful. Try bending down now. Tell me what the pain is. One through ten. Maybe a seven, maybe an eight. It's a seven or eight right now. Hey, Jesus. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hey. My daughter brought me here. Your daughter she brought you here. She's radical. She loves you. She's Amen. like, oh, we got to go. <laughs> we got to get there. So what's, where's she at? Where's your daughter at? Sophia. Hey, Sophia. She need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need, need it. Come up. Come on, Sophia. Hurry up. Come up. So what's the pain now on your knees? Be honest, woman of God. Be honest. It's gone. It's gone. I don't feel it. You don't feel nothing. Zero. Amen. Ready? Amen. You don't speak in tongues. Oh, you about to right now. Raise your hand if you don't speak in tongues. My goodness. Not only her, you all gonna get it right now. Do you have faith? I want you to open up your mouth and you pray like never before. If you if you've never spoken in tongues, I'm gonna preach the same message I preached out there. I'm gonna break religion. People say, oh, you need an interpreter. Look, that chapter was bringing order to a church that was out of order. This is called hermeneutics. This is the context of scripture. That same chapter says that when you prophesy in the church, there needs to be judges. Does that mean if I prophesy right now, I need two people to judge me every single time? That doesn't make sense. He was bringing order to a church that was out of order. Everyone say context. You need to know what the Holy Spirit was inspiring the writer to write to get the full revelation. Everyone say revelation. Every person I know that says you must need an interpreter to speak in tongues usually does not speak in tongues. Because when you speak in tongues, you understand, I don't need an interpreter. Interpretation is good when you're edifying the church. We even do it at our church. We've done interpretation before too. When you interpret tongues, you're interpreting the word of God and it's a prophetic word. That's what it is. It's prophecy. So Paul was just giving them mysteries. He was trying to help a church that was out of order. Everyone say ordinances. It's like right now in our church, if a whole bunch of women start coming in with short skirts or something like that, right? I would say, okay, new ordinance. Women need to wear a hoodie over their skirts and you need to wear longer pants. Not because I'm religious, but because it's causing the men to stumble. Does that make sense? I can do that as the leader of the church. That's what Paul was doing. So. Who just broke from religion? Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Who still needs to break from religion? I pray. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, for everyone that's raising their hand that needs to break from religion, I bind that religious spirit and I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. I break every generational curse of religion. Everything that's trying to keep people yoked up in bondage, not moving in God's power and love. I command to leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out! Everything go. Everything leave. All religion breaks. Now everyone that doesn't speak in tongues, raise your hand, including you. Raise your hand and pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Esa kale baso reya la baso. Reya la manto reki ala bakasaya. Pray in the Holy Ghost and stop looking at me. Esa kale baso lo. Ela ya la masare ya la baka. Esa bara masaya. Hey asa. The Bible says it's a deep groaning. When you groan, you go, ha. Ah. Everyone go, ha. Ah. And when you groan, it comes from the belly. Pray in tongues from your belly right now. Rivers of living water. Just like you go, ha. Ah. Go, hey, yala yala masore. Hey, ki yala bakori yala. Open up your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Religion will die in Houston, Texas. They brought the wrong one to Texas. Sola bakata ye. Come on, she ala bakori. Rimantori. Prophesy in tongues. Saki ala basu. Rey ala basu. Keep going. Pray. If you can't pray in tongues for two minutes, man. Y'all need to start praying in tongues for a few hours a day. Watch your whole life change. Hey, la calle rabasola, reki ala maso. Hey, ala na sorry, ala masaya. Roki eli arre matore, reki ala barre masaya riamaye. Sing in tongues. Bori amaye le masaya. Rocky Alia Sandayete, Romi Ali Mando Ravaso. All right, raise your hand if you just spoke in tongues for the first time. Hallelujah. Did you just speak in tongues? I did. How'd it feel? It felt like a like a rush, like something was like. <laughs> And for the religious person out there, you go ahead and keep believing that it's not real. This ain't no paid actor. I never met her in my life. This is the evidence of power. We are demonstrating God's power here for you to believe. This is what Jesus did. You got a, you got a choice to believe it or keep staying in your religion. And your religion's getting you nowhere real quick. Every person I know that doesn't believe in tongues, they ain't casting out demons. They ain't healing the sick. And they usually become sensationalists, which is thinking the gifts, gifts have ceased. You know why they think the gifts have ceased? Because they don't move in the gifts. And that's called rejection. Rejection can turn into pride real quick. So humble yourself and repent. And, use, and with your faith, try to. Watch the Holy Ghost take over. Amen. Let's give it up for this woman of God. Where was your pain, man of God? Uh, pretty much my whole body. Mostly my feet. Mostly your feet. Yeah. What was the pain, 1 through 10, before the prayer? Probably like, in, like, a, like a 9, I had to actually sit down. A 9, you had to sit down. Yeah. And what's the pain now? I mean, I feel a little bit on my left foot. Be honest. Yeah. What's the pain, 1 through 10? Right, like a 3, 3. Four. What about your right foot? It's fine. Was it hurting before? Yeah, both feet. And where does your pain come from? The heels. The heels. Yes, sir. You know what you're going to do with your heel? Stomp on demons. Go like that. What's your left heel? What's your heel? I command as he does that, Lord, this is a prophetic move. He's going he's gonna to keep going. He's going to stomp on demons, stomp on snakes. I command the heel to be healed right now. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now check it out. What's the pain now? One through ten. I don't feel anything. Zero. Zero. And you're not lying? You be honest, bro. I mean, I don't feel it. Zero, because you're healed. You're healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's made whole in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Everything be made whole. Jump up and down. Go ahead. Man, praise God, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Who's next? Hey, 
you got baptized. Earlier, I was walking by her. She had a whole bunch of water. I was like, you sweating? She was like, no, I got baptized. Where was your pain? I want to be healed from addiction. Hey, you came up here in faith. Okay. Stand right there. Don't even touch. Don't, stand right there. Watch this. Say, Jesus, I'm done. Is there people in your family addicted to stuff? I heard, I heard so quickly, generational ulcer. It's a generational altar of addiction. Okay, relax, close your eyes. No, just one word. I command that altar to be broken right now. Come out of her. Come out of her right now. All addiction, leave. I command that altar to be destroyed. Leave her. Leave her. Woo. Depression, go to. Every spirit of depression and rejection, anxiety. I bind that spirit. And I bind the spirit of Jezebel. Come out of her. Come out of her. Hey. Leave her. She about to get fully delivered. She thought it was addiction. It was more than that. God loves her. God's about to deliver her. Come out of her mouth. God loves her. Tyler. Out. In Jesus' name. All of it. All of it go. Take that mic. All of it. Don't worry about it. All of 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 it. All of
Can jump up and down. Let me see. Hey! No ligaments. Bless you, Lord God. You're made whole. I got instructions for you. When you go home, worship the Lord more than you ever have. When you go home tonight, don't go to sleep. Worship the Lord for about an hour and praise him more than you ever have. And it will never come back. You've been prayed for healing before? Yeah. And they would leave sometimes and then come back. And then come back. Lord, show me that with you. And it causes doubt. I want you to read about the ten lepers. Who knows about that story? Nobody. <laughs> All of them got healed from leprosy. Leprosy was worse than COVID back then. They would kick people out of the town for it. And they all left Jesus, but one came back to give him praise and say, thank you. And he said, because you came back, you're made whole. I'm going to tell you something. Leprosy would cause people's arms to fall off, legs to fall off. Like they would be, and they would just, they got healed, but they weren't made whole. The man who came back, he got made whole. That makes sense. So by you praising God tonight and thanking him for the healing, even if you go home and you're like, man, I feel like a one or two right now. Like, what the heck? You say, I don't care. I'm healed. And praise him. And watch how it never comes back, bro. Roger. Roger. Copy. God bless you, man. All right. Yeah. Did you get delivered? You got delivered? You've been through deliverance before, haven't you? In the past. Have you seek deliverance before in the past? Yes. A lot. The Lord told me that about you earlier. So I'm going to tell you something. First, I'm going to say the Lord loves you so much. But he doesn't want you to become what's called a deliverance junkie. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of deliverance going on around the body of Christ, which is powerful. God's flexing his muscle. Praise God. I believe in it. But there's some people who literally seek deliverance more than they seek God. They're seeking the gift more than the one who gives the gift. They're seeking the deliverance rather than the deliverer. It's like if, I, if my wife says she loves me and she only loves me when I give her something. I'm just her sugar daddy. But she loves me for me regardless if I give her anything because she loves me. You see what I'm saying? She loved me before I had a platform, before anybody knew who I was. When I was, a, when I was in the world. You see what I'm saying? Are you going to love Jesus? You're going to fall in love with him? You're going to read his word, worship, pray? Yes. Seek him in spirit and truth. Yes. As you do that, you're going to see how no demon comes back. But if you keep seeking deliverance, it can become an addiction. Do you feel like you've been dealing with that? Be honest. Okay. I'm going to pray for you. And where'd you get healed? Did you get healed? Where? No, I was just. You see? I said for everyone to come up here that needs healing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I like I don't understand, but I want to understand. What happens is I'm gonna say it again because there's a deliverance movement going on and there's videos out there which is powerful. People think that that's that if I get come up and I get prayed for and something crazy happens that God loves me. But it's not about that. It's not. It's about your relationship with Him. When you seek Him and you get to know Him, if that becomes it's added on. If you need it, like I don't even trip about deliverance no more I used to but now I'm just like man I'd rather read his word I want to pray I want to I want to bask in his presence I want to fall in love with Jesus you see what I'm saying are you missing that yes. I know I want to pray that the Lord his love will begin to purify you and give you peace as you seek him okay and if you need deliverance it'll happen I'm going to tell you this. I've been part of this movement for some years. I've seen mass deliverance. I've been, I've been part of it. And I've seen the ones who are deliverance junkies. They go from deliverance minister to deliverance minister. They go and look for deliverance ministers. That's wrong. That's actually idolatry. And God will allow you to keep doing that until you realize it's not about deliverance. It's about him, the deliverer. That's why Jesus literally said, do not rejoice because the demons submit to my name, but rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. And he praised the Father. Amen. Let's pray for him, my love. We're going to pray for you that the love of God would just fill your whole life, saturate your whole being. I want you to encounter your love because, his love because you know why? You lacked love growing up. And the Lord wants to fill you with such a pure, 
Yes. See, that's love. That's what he, that's deliverance. Pray for him, my love. Let's pray for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, may you fill her with love, Lord, peace. May she be filled with your love, Lord, and peace and joy. May she find you, may she seek you in a way that she never has, and may you reveal yourself in a way to her that will just make her addicted to seeking you. <laughs> I pray she's addicted to you, Jesus, a, G, a radical Jesus lover, and that the testimony that she has now of seeking deliverance will be a testimony for others who will be going through the same thing in this revival period. And that she would help others realize, hey, 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 it's about Jesus. Let me tell you about the man I love, my God, my friend. Father God, bless her. Have the angels protecting her, Lord. And may she encounter your presence in the secret place like never before. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to, look, we're going to do something. Right now, come here. Do you have a mother? Do you have a good relationship with your mother? I know. Stand right here. I want you to hug my wife like she was your real mother. And I want you to say, I love you, Mom. Keep hugging her. Go ahead. Let it go. Release. Amen. You see, the love of God is love that covers a multitude of sins, right? It's love that, that perfect love that casts out all what? Fear. I love you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. That's a war cry. Where was your pain? How bad was it, one through ten? Like a seven. What do you feel now? Like a two. Two. Like a two or one. Yeah, you want to lay hands a bit? I command full healing right now in the name of Jesus. Full healing. Full healing. Knee be made whole right now. All pain to zero. Every single cartilage, every single bone, go back to place right now. In Jesus' name, no more. Never return. Amen. All right, let's try it out now. Try it out. Go ahead. What's the pain? One through ten. Yeah. Amen. Let me ask you a question. It's also my head. I hurt. Listen to this. Do you deal with fear? Do you deal with fear sometimes? A lot of times. A lot of fear. Okay. My wife's going to pray for you. I'll pray for you too. And you're going to get delivered from that spirit. That's what's causing it. You want that? Say you want, you want deliverance. Say Jesus. Jesus. Close your eyes. Relax. Don't worry. Say you did not give me a spirit of fear. You did not give me the spirit of fear. Your spirit. Your spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Gives me power. Gives me power. Jesus. Jesus. Gives me love. Gives me love. And Father. And Father. You give me a sound mind. You give me the sound mind. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Fill my mind. Fill my mind. And I renounce. And I renounce. All fear. All fear. And every demon. And every demon. And every generational curse. And every generational curse. Is broken. Is broken. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Every spirit of fear out. Out. All of it. Up and out. Every spirit of fear, I command you to go. Every spirit of fear covering that spirit of rejection, I command you up and out of this temple. Up and up. You take every other spirit with you right now in Jesus' name. All of it out. Every spirit of fear, I command you out of this temple. Up and up right now. All of it out. Ow. Out. 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 Every spirit of rejection, for she is not rejected but loved by the most high. 
up and out of this temple up and out of this temple no more all of it all of it all of it out all of it out right now in jesus name all 93 will sweat clean in the name of jesus all of it out every generational fear out out all the way back to adam and eve throughout her entire bloodline all of it out no longer will you go down to generations all of it out jesus name. Oh, hallelujah let's give it up for jesus give her a big hug amen <laughs> Amen. God is good. Amen. What's up, man? How you doing? I saw you in the back, man. You know your word, huh? Yes, sir. What was your pain now? It's in the back of my shoulder. What was the pain, one through ten? Like nine. Do you feel it right now? Nope. Zero. Zero. Could you, lift, could you lift your hand before? You don't feel nothing? Nope. Wow, bro. Wow. Come on. Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I pray as he praises you tonight, Lord. There's a man of God right here. I pray as he praises you, Lord. And thank you, Father, that you've broken him out of religion, too. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Hmm. <laughs> thank you that you're going to use him to confound religion. You're going to use him, Lord. That's the basis of like. Say it. Go ahead. That's the basis, like a what, like what I wanted out of this whole thing. When I went into it, I was like, God, I, Jesus, you, I, your personality, I know you. So he was like, okay, I'm gonna sit down. And I put you last. I had a prophet speak to me, so I'm gonna put you last, so you can be first. And then when I start understanding, then it, it's, it became as real as my hand. Wow. <laughs> do you do music too? Yeah? Mm -hmm. gonna, God's going to use you for music, but like you said, in the, in the prophetic, in that office. Because you, you do know the word, like you, God's going to, is going to rocket launch you quickly. You're going to help the people that you, that, you know, the church you were raised in? Mm -hmm. Those type of people? Mm -hmm. You're going to help bring them out, like a Moses. For real. Watch. So, Father, thank you for this man of God. You just, you just told me today was a prophetic move, like him being healed right now, him being healed. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. This starts something new that you're going to start doing, Lord, as he breaks religion, as you, as you use him to not only prophesy but move in love, Lord. I pray that he rules in more love than ever before and not get cocky or prideful, Lord, because I know when we, pro when we prophesy and we know certain things, we can get cocky sometimes. So, Lord, as I, pray, I pray as you reveal things to him, Lord, he'll love more than ever. He'll put love at the forefront. In Jesus' name, Lord, bless him. Thank you, Father. Trust me, we know. Appreciate we the know. honor, my brother, for real. Mm -hmm. You a warrior too. Go out there and fight, man. Man. How you doing? God bless you, Mark. Uh, you. Omar? Yes, God bless you. God bless you too. So, where was your pain? Omar. You know, where was your pain before? You came up here because you had pain or you got healed? Or you came up here to get prayer? Oh, to get healed. To get healed? Yes. Where's your pain? I have a media media sign mass the size the size about a iPhone on my chest. I was diagnosed with cancer a couple months back. And uh, I declared that I want to be delivered from it. Okay. I believe it in my heart that I already am. I go to the doctor next weekend to find out if I am healed. Delivered, healed. Ask you a question. You ever encountered a snake? As in physically? Yes. Because I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, has he encountered a snake in like the spirit realm? And the Lord was like, no, ask him if he encountered a snake. It was in the physical. 
What happened when you encountered a snake? <laughs> I, I either killed it or I ran. <laughs> but it's been like, it's happened before. Right. You know, that's not normal. Do you deal with your mind con being controlled? Like, do you feel like your mind's controlled sometimes? Yes. So I look straight into your eyes, bro, and I seen a, I seen a python spirit run like this. You know, it's funny because, um, uh, uh, so uh, I've always been, my whole family's always been followers of Christ. Uh, and uh, so it, 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 it runs generational. And I have this immense love for God and for Jesus Christ. But Although growing up as a teenager, you know, we, 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 we are lukewarm. You know, you were, we, you're pretty rebellious. Yes. Yeah, so, but I would still, I would still try to, try to tell my friends and prophesy to them, hey, you know, get close to God because He's the answer. And but, uh, but you, but you were still living that lifestyle, right? So you were trying to bring people out, but you weren't brought out. Exactly. So I was more concerned about other people's so salvation. You had the right, my own. you had the right heart, but you didn't have the right mind. Yes. And so I'm gonna cast that demon out of you. Please do. You ever been delivered from feel, a demon? I can feel them. I, I, I have sleep paralysis. He comes to me in my dreams. I know he's there. He's about and, to leave. And, and something tells me that there's many. Do you have to forgive your mother? What was that? Do you have to forgive your mother? Yes. What did she do to you? Did she, lie, did she lie about you? Did she lie about me? To other people? And gossip? And put you down? And it caused rejection. And it caused you to be hurt. You see what I'm what I'm you flowing in is the Holy Ghost, because I'm seeing visions of everything that happened to you that brought you to this point. And the Lord said his love is going to deliver you. You need to know that God is realer than real. I know you believe he's real, but you need to believe he's realer than real, and right now it's happening. I never met you from a hole in the wall. But the Lord showed me all that about you because he wants to free you, and he said, I'm your father and your mother. God is not gender. God is all powerful. The spirit. I command any unclean spirit. What? Say this. Say, I forgive my mother. I'm done. I'm done. I release forgiveness. I release forgiveness. No more rebellion. No more rebellion. Jesus changed my character. Jesus changed my character. You love my personality. You love my personality. But you want to change me inside. But you want to change me inside. My character. My character. My mind. My mind. My heart. My heart. Jesus. Jesus. Heal me. Heal me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray. Every unclean spirit come out of him. Come out. All witchcraft spirits. Ow. Ow. Leave his belly. Leave his belly. Leave his spine. Unwrap. Ow. 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 In Jesus' name. Ow. And that spirit of rejection that came in when he was younger, I command you to leave by the love of God. You cannot stay. Out of him. Out of him. Out of him. Leave him. Leave him. Every unclean spirit, leave his stomach and leave his back in the name of Jesus Christ. Come here, Joel. Lay hands. Every unclean spirit, leave his mind. Put your hand on his mind, too. Everything that came in through sexual immorality. There we go. Let's give it up for Jesus. All of them. Out. Freedom in Jesus' name. All of us. Let's go. Fred. Keep praying, Pastor. He needs more deliverance, Pastor. Keep praying. How you doing, woman of God? Where'd you have pain? Uh, it wasn't more so pain. Uh, my nostril was stuffed up, and uh, it's the first time that I could actually breathe. And right now you can breathe perfectly? perfectly. No issues? No issues. It's been stuffed up since March. It's been stuffed up since March, and right now you just got healed. Yeah, I can breathe through both my nose. And you're not lying at all. <laughs> Athletics? Uh, I used to. What? I uh, played quite a 
quite a few sports. Um, I've seen, like, I see the spirit, I've seen a bunch of sports. Hallelujah, let's give it up for Jesus. And he's healed in Jesus' name. So the Lord showed me that you had, there's a bunch of, I've seen a football, basketball, baseball, what I, what I, what I, is that what you played? I played football, basketball, track. Uh, I've seen a bunch of like emojis, like sports books. Sports, and the Lord told me she plays sports, and He said that my, her ministry is going to be in teaching the youth sports in Christ. We're going to train young people up in sports in the faith. Hey, my brother, look at my eyes. You're healed. You're healed bro. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're gonna go to the doctor. You'll go to the doctor's office and see a miracle. Huh? And I'm, I'm waiting for that miracle. Right there. Completely here. It happens. It already but, happened. When you see it, when you see it, the Kairos movement in the physical, like when it happens, which is already done in the spiritual, the Lord just told me to tell you don't ever shut your mouth about your testimony. Tell the whole world. I'm dead serious. And I will do that. Because that's what I want to do. You said it was right here? Right here. Do you, do you pray, pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost? Speak in tongues out of the hands. Revocoto. Let me see. So rakato rabaka. Pray in tongues with me. Seke teke reboso. Come on. Open up your mouth and pray with me. Robocoso lobo seke te. Louder. Keep going. Say a raco remata, reki alabaso, reki alabasa lau. Oh sayata kuri mi alabasia. Hey abakore, ese mendia. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. <laughs> Jesus loves you, bro. Because I've been following you for months and months through my journey. And I, and I would pray, and I would pray, wow, I wish I could meet this man. And just about a week ago, you announced it. I got so excited, told my fiance, we have to go. We have to go. Hallelujah. You encounter Jesus today. Jesus today. I can't. It's an over, overbearing feeling. I can't. Overwhelmed with love. Yes. That's Jesus. So like I said, the Lord showed me that you're going to teach a lot of youth, a lot of youth. You're going to teach them Jesus through the athletics. You see, people, can, people think that you have to, in ministry, that you have to have a microphone and be a pastor. But that's not true. You can do it through other things that you're good at. The Lord doesn't want you to put up sports. He wants you to teach it. You got to pray to him which sport, how. I'm revealing to you a prophetic word. That means on the top of the mountain, God has his plan for you, but you need to climb up the mountain through seeking him to get there. Are you willing to receive that? You yeah. want to do that? Yeah, I don't mind. Do you like children? Yeah. They, a lot. Like, they like me a lot. Okay. <laughs> because that's your, that's, your, that's, your, that's, your, that's your gifting. That's your anointing. God's going to place a mantle on you for that. If you seek him. You want that? Yeah. I'll pray for you. Hey, and we got food. Who wants to buy food today? In the back for real. Make sure y'all get some food. What up, In the name of Jesus, that you move through her mightily, Lord, that she dreams dreams, that she's able to speak with, with her lips the things that you tell her in her dreams, Lord God, for the youth. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, that you anoint these hands, Lord, so she can cast out demons, heal the sick for the children. I'm going to go, I'm going to go right Take there. Take her far and far and far for your ministry, right now. Lord, to the wheelchair. Baptize her. Walk with me to the wheelchair, Jesus, please. Speak and talk to her. Put up from here, from deep. Roba so I was talking to your husband. When's the last time you walked? February 3rd, 
February 2020. And right now, like, have you tried to walk recently? Turn it, turn the microphone, uh, turn the speaker. When's the last time you tried to walk? Yesterday. And could you? My legs won't move. With the help of people, it could. Okay, so I'm gonna pray for you. Mm. I just seen a volcano in the spirit, so what's gonna happen today is that healing is about to erupt. You're gonna see something happen right now that you've never seen. And everything is gonna change. Do you want that? Do you believe it? And you forgave the people at the conference. I wanted to pray for your healing, but they, they stopped letting me pray for people. They told me I had to go. But now we got time. Amen. So, do you really, truly forgive all the people who hurt you and have, no, and have nothing against them? Yes. Today's your birthday, right? Yes. Hallelujah. It's your birthday. <laughs> This real Leave her. All fear go to Sakaleboso. Hey, uh, so ha corrobo tiala. Robo kiala basuya la batoro. You've been dealing with pride? Yes. Does she deal with pride? You gotta be honest. It's about her healing. So I want you to say this. I, I confess and repent of pride. Say it again. See, I let go of pride. I let go of pride. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, Lord, she's not mad at you anymore. She trusts in you. Say, Jesus, I'm not mad at you. Jesus, I'm not mad at you. Say, Father, I trust in you. Father, I trust in you. You walked on water, Jesus. You walked on water, Jesus. You healed the sick. You healed the sick. You turned water into wine. You turned water into wine. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. Jesus. Jesus. I believe. I believe. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can heal me. You can heal me. So Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask Father, according to your word, that by your stripes we are healed. And by what you did on the cross, our sickness, you took it with you. And you beat it. So right now in Jesus' name, I command her body to be made whole. Are you willing to test it out? Do you want to? Okay, I see what you're saying. This is what we're going to do. Okay, look at me. Okay, so we got to do this smart. Come back. Can y'all handle that and come back? Now. Right, do, handle it and come right back. Let's wait 30 minutes. Okay. You're healed right now. I, I promise the enemy attacked. I'm not going to say the enemy attacked on the way here. I promise you you're healed. When you try it out in private with him, you're going to see what happens. Okay. You, did you felt something when I was praying for you, didn't you? You felt it in your legs. Yeah. You're healed. Come back, okay? Okay. Go handle that and then come back, you guys. I bless you guys. Let's give it up for them. Come on. Yeah, I'm gonna be here all day.
All right, who's up next? Come on. We had an older woman at our church that couldn't walk. And she got up and she started literally walking on her own. It was crazy. That last week. The same way she walked, she's going to walk too. It's for her birthday. <laughs> Okay. Where was your pain? Uh, it was in my heart, but I'm standing in the gap for my brother Andrew. And we're triplets, okay. and uh, he got into a bad car crash about five years ago. And we've been praying and asking God to heal him. He had a traumatic brain injury. Okay. And I've been asking God for a miracle, and instantly that he'll get up and dance and praise God, and his testimony will be heard and saved others and lead my family to Christ. What's his name? Andrew. Everyone put out your hand. Let's pray for Andrew. So, Father, we pray for Andrew right now in the name of Jesus Christ. A miracle healing, Father. Thank you for both of these brothers. This evangelist, this prophet. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Their prayers, Lord, will not go in vain. They're not going to return to you void. It's your word, Father. Thank you for Andrew and his miracle healing right now. I have even seen a vision of you guys coming back to the church, wherever we at, and you're going to testify about this. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. brokenness y'all want to be broken that's brokenness that brings you closer to God it's deeper than they know everything going on is deeper than they know if you want to be used by God it takes everything you have to give God your entire life <laughs> if you want to truly be used by God and I'm talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth you have to give up everything you have to be broken serious. Y'all want that? God bless you, man. Thank you. God bless you, man. Testify when it happens, please. Where was your pain? I want to hear from my generational trauma. What was it? A generational what? Of what? Sexual abuse? Verbal and emotional neglect. Did you, okay, did you ever go, okay, what else? That's it. You sure? Okay. Are you embarrassed about some things? Yes. And you don't want to say it. You have to say it. I can't. Yes, you do. I just saw the Lord told me in a vision she must say it for her to get delivered. Me and my mom used to fight. What else? I don't know what else? I want to do something. Talk to her real quick on the side. Begin this meeting. I want you to release everything to her. She's going to pray for you. You're about to get delivered. You want that? Yes. I'm talking about the deep, dark secrets. Release it. It's a spirit. Is there incest in your family? I don't know. Just talk to her real quick, okay? God bless you. What did you get healed from? From my head. You had pain? Or was it 1 through 10? And make sure you guys are in line if you already got healed so that I can pray for mass deliverance. Please. So you're praying for your head? I mean, you, we prayed for your head and it got completely healed. Not completely. What, do you, what did it go from a, a, what, a what to a what? 10 to a 4. And the closer I was getting, it was getting lighter. And the closer you were getting, it was getting lighter. You know why? There's angels all at this altar, and Jesus Christ is here. I'm so serious. That's why I look up sometimes, because I can literally see angels, and I can see the Lord moving. They're all up in this service, because they love us all. I believe it. My, my wife's going to lay hands on you. 
And she's going to literally blow on you. And the Bible says when, they, when, he, when, he, when he rose from the dead, he breathed on his disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So she's going to breath on you. Have you spoken tongues before? No, I haven't. You're going to receive it right now. I want to receive it. You're going to open up your mouth as she breathes on you. And she's going to pray in tongues. And you're going to open up your mouth and you're going to pray in tongues the loudest you can. Okay. Like a trumpet, not caring about anyone here. If I can do it, you can do it too. I'll go in the middle of the street right now and do it. I don't care. You down? I'm down. Is your father religious? He, he is religious. Like religious in a bad way. He's in it. My mom is Catholic and he's, he goes with her because he respects her and he believes in God. And recently he's been wanting to get connected with God again. And he's been telling me because I used to be very believer of God. And I knew at a point I was a generation cur a generation breaker. Yeah. But I lost myself through it. And then. I saw your God, dad with a religious spirit. And the Lord said he wants to deliver him too. That's why I'm saying this. And it's not coincidence that your dad is now seeking God. Because at one point he wasn't. And then he became. And now he's coming back. As she prays over you and as you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit is going to pray for your father as you speak in tongues. Your father's going to, in the next, the next month, your dad's going to completely change. And after it happens, make sure you testify. Send us an email. Amen. Amen. Lay hands, breath on him. Lay, there you go. Receive ye the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Idols, hallelujah. That you won't stop on it. Hallelujah. Who has, who has vaping cigarettes that they want to give up tonight? Raise your hand. If you smoke vaping cigarettes, come bring it to the front. If you, if you have vaping cigarettes and weed or drugs and you got it in your car, raise your hand. Go get it. Go get it and bring it back. Bring it to the altar. Let's stop on the devil tonight. Make room for them so they can come back in. So what happened? Take one sip. You know why I love this? Because back in Orlando, we got a time limit. But here, the time limit's a lot longer. I would do this all day and night, for real. So my question for you, woman of God, is out there you were, were you spitting up blood? Yes. Has that ever happened to you? Um, last year when I started my deliverance, and I don't feel like I was done. So you were, you're going through a process of deliverance, right? Yes. I just seen a Luciferian spirit, in this, like a spirit with a top hat. There was deep Luciferianism in your bloodline. High level witchcraft. I believe it was your great-grandfather on your father's side. Did you, did you know who he was? I didn't. I didn't know my dad's family. I seen him like in a literal barn doing like high rent. Like this is where people start sacrificing children and doing weird stuff. But I know he had a lot of wives. He had a lot of what? Like wives. A wives, lot of wives. Kids. Did he have property? Yes. Land. I think so. 
animals and agriculture. I seen him in a barn. It was nighttime. And I seen them doing a, like a high, it was him and some other people in a circle. And they were doing high-ranking witchcraft. He had money. Because I also saw him in a suit. So the Lord showed me in the vision that he, that he actually had money. So what happens with people is that they, they do things to get money. And witchcraft. And, and, and I, I would say, unfortunately, you were, you were born in that bloodline, but it's not unfortunate. It's fortunate because now God sent you to break the curse in your family. You smoke cigarettes? I just seen cigarettes in the spirit. Where are they at? In my car. Go get them. Thank you, Jesus. Daughter, I'll pray for her. Go, go get, oh, cause, oh, that's perfect. She, she, she cannot get delivered till you get delivered. It's generational. Go get the cigarettes. Trust me. And bring them back. Someone escort her. Hey, one of the, hey, Jay, you got her? Jay's going to escort you. You don't have to even put your shoes on. Go barefoot. Who cares? It's hot out there, though. And I'm going to pray for you and your daughter when you come back, woman of God. Don't worry. Who's next? Come on. It's not even that hot, though. I see everybody fanning themselves. It's cool. We're getting a workout, man. Body of Christ need a workout. I don't hear a lot of claps on that one. Right, Pastor Benji? Let him know. We used to be in the sauna, like, literally doing push-ups. We used to be in the sauna doing push-ups, praying in tongues. Soldiers. Y'all soldiers. That means you got to keep your body, soul, and spirit right. physically gotten healed but I wanted to get healed from I saw it in the spirit depression and suicide a anxiety but come out come out of her leave let's go we're going to the abyss tonight I bind the spirit the strong I tie you up you can't stay nope you ain't staying you have to go on the count of three, I want every demon that came in with you too. Mm, it's, a yeah. it's a principality. Yeah. It's a high-ranking spirit. Yeah. One, I bind every demon. <laughs> two, I wash everything with the blood. Yeah. Three, ow! Yeah. Ow! Yeah. Ow! Yeah. Demon, ow. Ow. Leave her. You see? Babe, you know what's last. My wife's a Jezebel slayer. And every let's mocking go. spirit. Let's leave. go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Up and out. 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 Up
She will prophesy for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has not called you to prophesy, but has called her to prophesy. Look at me. Up and up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You can't stay. You can't stay. You have to go. Up and up. Go now. Evacuation plan. The king. Stop manifesting in the name of Jesus Christ. No more so. Stop. You can't move. Look at me, you wicked witch. It is time for you to get out of this temple. No more so. Out of this temple. Take Lilith with you. Take Athalia with you. Take depression with you. Take anxiety with you. Take sickness and infirmity with you. And take rejection with you. Let's go. Up and out. Go. Now. Out. 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 There you go. There you go. There you go. Up and out, Jezebel. Jezebel. Up and out, Jezebel. Up and out, Jezebel. Out. All of it. trying to say that minor attracted persons like pedophiles are being allowed into the LGBTQ community like it's okay to be a pedophile mm -hmm. homosexuality is a sin right you believe that yes just like fornication yeah. it's the same thing God doesn't say oh homosexuality is worse it's it's all fornication that's why when I talk to homosexuals I say look you could be homosexual drink alcohol get drunk get high it's the same thing in God's eyes he hates it because he's holy and righteous the Lord look at you're a teenager yes how old are you 16 I should have said it because I've seen it by the spirit just to increase your faith a little bit but let me tell you something you're in a transitionary period in your life where the decisions you make now will determine your outcome Okay. I'm going to tell you what the enemy wants. Because the Lord just showed me two paths in the spirit. First path. You want the good or you want the bad news? The good. The Lord has called you to be an evangelist and a worshiper. Okay? I've seen you. You know how like worshipers wear like the beige clothing like that? Like, like it's a common like trend. I've seen you wearing that. I seen you at an outdoor stadium. I seen you at the bottom. Everyone was worshiping at the top. But you were at the bottom worshiping. And while you were worshiping, you were casting demons out. I don't know what ministry you were a part of, but it was a powerful ministry. Shoot, it might be this ministry in the future. I don't know. But all I did, I saw you part of a ministry, and you were a worshiper, but you were a, a bold evangelist casting demons out of people. And you were celibate. You were single. And you didn't care about that no more. And all you wanted to do was seek Jesus Christ. You didn't care about the sex. Now, do you want me to tell you what the enemy wants to do? 
because I've seen it. I'm telling you, I've seen it. Everything I've been saying up here has been spot on, right? Yes. So you know this is to be true. The other side is I saw homelessness. I saw you having a child out of wedlock. I saw men abusing you and raping you. I seen you getting even to drug dealers. You were attracted to drug dealers and you couldn't stop it. I seen even like deep hardcore drugs because of depression and suicide. And I seen that path being very rough, but then God pulling you in when you're really a lot older like your mother. You got a choice tonight. You can learn through revelation or tribulation. So you can learn tonight through my, me re revealing it to you by the Spirit of God, what God wants for you, the future. He has plans for you to prosper, to do great things, to evangelize, to, he's going to take care of you. I've seen you even traveling to different states, loving worship. For some reason, I've seen you in Dallas. i actually seen you at the church upper room. I don't even know if you know what that is. You should look into it. But I've seen you really obsessed with music, with worship. So with that being said, you want a man of God that's a husband in the future? You want beautiful children? Yes. Generationally blessed. Because I've seen the first child you're going to have is a boy. I'm saying it boldly because it's going to happen. And when it does happen, you'll remember me. You'll never, you'll never forget this prophetic word for the rest of your life. And I believe, I'm, I have full faith, you're going the evangelist route. Your mother's about to be delivered from this generational altar, which is going to lighten it up for you in the spirit. It's going to be a lot easier. Your mother's going to prophetically intercede for you on your walk. Prayer warrior. Nurturer. She's going to take care of you. What you guys have been through is a testimony. Mom, you're a good mom. You're, I heard the Lord say, you're a great mother. I said good. God said, you're a great, you're a great mother. All right, time to break that, that altar. You ready? It's going to be so much easier. I want you to drop the cigarettes and vape. And I want a prophetic move. One of you stomp on one, one of you stomp on the other. Stomp on it. That's prophetic. So now, hold this one. In the holy name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break every generational altar set up in their bloodline of Luciferianism, any type of witchcraft. I break that spirit of Leviathan and I command right now in the name of Jesus Christ, every demon to come up and come out now. Ow! Ow! Leave them. In Jesus' name, come out of them. Come out of them. Ow! All the way out. All the way out. Rejection go. I sever every unhealthy soul tattoo. Leave them out of the mouth leave 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 in Jesus name everything go ow leave 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 everything has to go I break the witchcraft in the bloodline I command it to go no more addiction no more cigarettes this woman of God is healed from infirmity today too anything operating in her temple that's trying to cause sickness I command you to loose to the abyss <coughs> yup leave everything go let me pray for her alone real quick. Let me pray, let me pray for her alone real quick. Her. Stand in front of Put your hands down, close your eyes, relax. Don't worry. Did you ever wear like a witchcraft bracelet? Yes. Yes. When did you throw it off? Recently? Um, about like last year. That's pretty recent. Yes. But so you used to believe in that stuff? No. Why'd you wear it? trending TikTok. I was blinded. Okay. So I saw a witchcraft spirit. So I'm going to command that demon to come out. Man, demons can come in through a lot of stuff and people don't know. I want you to do something. Say, I renounce witchcraft. I renounce witchcraft. I renounce fornication. I, I renounce fornication. And the idolatry. And the idolatry. Of any man. Of any man. Any boy. Any boy. The Lord will bless me. The Lord will bless me. With a husband. With a husband. In his timing. In his timing. I'll stay celibate. I'll stay celibate. And I'll wait. And I'll wait. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, relax. Amen. Close your eyes. Relax. Don't even worry. Every unclean spirit, come out of her. 
Yep. Let's go. Leave. Yep, it's time. Yep, you got to go. You can't stay now. Yep, it's time to go. Leave her. Where's my wife? Leave her. Leave her. Put your hand on her stomach. It's another Jezebel spirit. Ow! 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 Leave her. Yep, you're going to leave. Jezebel, you're going to leave. Out of the temple. Let's go. Out, 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 out. children with you. I bind you to your king. I bind you to all your children. I bind you to every single thing. And I command you out of this temple. Let's go. Out. No more. No more. No more. Out. 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 Take every spirit of rage with you. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go out. 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 drag you out. Take, a, take that python spirit with you too. Let's go. Let's go. Unwrap yourself from your intestines. Unwrap yourself from her intestines. Unwrap yourself from her intestines. Let's go. Out. 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 No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. Every witchcraft spirit. Every witchcraft altar. Shattered in the name of Jesus. You gotta go. generations, all the way back to her great grandmother. No more. No more. Out. Out. Every pressure in her, in, her, in her head right now. Out. Out. Unwrap yourself. 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 There you go. There you go, Jezebel. Out. Let's go. more persistent. The Holy Ghost is more persistent than you. Out of this temple. Out of this temple. Out of this temple. Out of this temple. Out of this temple, Jezebel. Out. Every spirit of rejection that you're trying to cover up, I command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Out. 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 Let's go. She's out. Look at me. You gotta forgive your dad. It wasn't his fault. Look at me. It wasn't his fault. You have to talk about your testimony. You're an evangelist for the Lord, so you gotta go out and testify. But you gotta get set free so the Lord can use you. You want that? So it's time to forgive your dad. What's your dad's name? Gilbert. Okay. What did Gilbert do? He committed. Suicide. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. Look at me. It's not his fault. Don't hold that against him. I know Gilbert may not be here right now, but you have a father. Look at me. His name is Yahweh. He's a good, good father. And he 
loves you so much that he wants you to be set free. Okay? Hey, we're going to get into a mass deliverance after her, okay? So who needs deliverance? Forgive All right, we're going to make sure everyone's good. So Father, even the people testifying, y'all need deliverance, right? Okay. So if I, everyone can go back to their seats real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the crowd. So go back to your seats real quick. Please. You good? Hey, you good over there? You got water? What's up? I'm going to pray. If everyone can go back to their seats, I'm going to go through the crowd and I'm going to lay hands. I just want to give a quick word. Hallelujah. God is good. All right, so let's talk about deliverance real quick because I know a lot of um, deliverance is being spread throughout the body of Christ, like the revelation of it, the, 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 the revelation that a Christian can have a demon. I'm going to break that down real quick. How can a Holy Spirit-filled Christian have a demon? The first thing I'm going to say is that a Holy Spirit-filled Christian can never be possessed by a demon. But there's a difference between possession and oppression. Other people will use the word demonization. So what oppression slash demonization is, is when your flesh or soul is inflicted by a demonic spirit. Everyone say triune. That means we're a three-part system. We're a three-part person. We have a soul, spirit, and body, right? So when we receive the Holy Ghost, our spirit man, our spirit man, or spirit woman, however you want to say it, is made perfect. Everyone say perfect. But your soul still has to what? Renew, right? Your mind, will, and emotions. So some people come to Christ. They get baptized. Why am I still not healed? Why can I still not give up the porn and alcohol? Why can't I give up the drugs? Why can't I still do this? It's because your soul has not renewed by the word of God. And sometimes there's demons in your soul that want to keep you bound so you don't grow in relationship with God and his word and prayer. And that's why people need demons casted out of them. If you ever see somebody, on, they come to Christ on fire, a week later they're back in the world. Two years later, I'm going to do it again. Back in the world. Who's that person in here? Raise your hand. You need deliverance from demons. Because God has called you. Everyone here has a purpose and destiny. Everyone here has a purpose and destiny. God has written a purpose and destiny for you. He's predestined it. He's predestined your plan. With your free will, you need to line up with his predestined plan that is written. He can restore all the years lost. If you're an older man or woman of God and you think it's too late for me, it's a lie. God can speed it up and restore it all. He does not operate in time and space. Space is what? Length times width times height. Right? I, just, I, I just heard a good sermon on this recently. And time is what? Out of this, time, is, time is, is something that's controlled that we move in. We move in time. We're like actors in time. You understand that? So there's a difference between time and space. We take up space and there's different kairos moments where things happen like 
wow, this just happened. I prayed for it. Wow, I've been asking for this. Like, like all oh, moments. There's times where there's kairos moments, and there's times where people are wasting time. Wait, all you're doing is smoking and drinking, and you have nothing going on for your life. You're wasting the time as God has given you for your literal predestined plan. You are put on this path, your predestined plan, to walk it out like an actor in a movie. Crazy, right? Who ever seen the Truman Show? That's a very, it's a very prophetic movie. We're here being watched by angels, demons, the cloud of witnesses. We're being tested. God already wrote out the script for us. We have the choice to, act, to line up with it with our free will or decide to write our own script. And people who want to write their own script want to be God themselves and don't even know it sometimes. Who else wanted to be God? The devil. So you could be a son of the devil and make your own script, or you could be a son of God and line up with Yahweh's script. And the way you do it is only by seeking the one who wrote it for you. The one who has control of the heavens and the earth, the galaxies, the universe. God is not the universe. He's in control of the universe. He does not operate in time and space. Look, I'm going to tell you something. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we're seated in his what? Body. And he's seated at the what? The right hand of the Father. We, God is in a realm of everlasting. You understand that? Eternal means what? It's going to last forever. But even with eternal, there was a time it started. Right? It means forever. Right? Eternal. Everlasting is what? No beginning, no end. It just is. And that's where the Father operates. So he doesn't look down and say, oh, my gosh, my son, they're not doing what, I don't know what's going on. No, he already knows the beginning to the end. Our job is to come here to get tested to see if we could actually come back to the one who created us. We are being tested here on this earth to see if we really love God. Isn't that crazy? There's no other purpose in life. I don't care if you have a multi-million job or a, a, a 20000 a year job. It doesn't matter. You can be the most successful person. Who cares? You can't take nothing with you. The only thing that matters is what you can do here on earth to glorify Christ. Because there's heavenly treasures that we can store up. There's rewards in heaven. When we get to the eternal realm, when we get to heaven, we're going to actually be able to enjoy the rewards that God has blessed us with. By what we did here to glorify him. Some of you have gifts. Who doesn't have any gifts? Who does not have any gifts? Someone lied to you. Everybody got gifts. You need to seek God and ask God, what's my gifts? You might have liked, in the world, you might have liked music. You might have liked drawing. You might have liked business. You might have liked cooking. You might have liked skating. You might have liked building things. Look, you can do all these things unto the glory of God. You don't have to be a pastor on a microphone. You can do many things to glorify Christ. Where are my kingdom business, business owners, my kingdom financiers in the building? None of them? Who owns a business in here? You're called to be a kingdom financer. God will bless your business as you bless his kingdom. I know, multi, I know billionaires in the kingdom that have no high school degree. I'm not kidding. And they're the most generous, humble people that you would never even know. But God has entrusted them because of their lack of love for money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. But the Bible also says that those who are diligent prosper, but those who are lazy have a spirit of poverty. The Bible also says he humbles with poverty and he exalts with riches. I'm going to say this and break some more religion. God does not want us to be broke. People say that's a prosperity gospel. Okay, if that's a prosperity gospel, I guess the Bible has a prosperity gospel. It's not a prosperity gospel. That's kingdom, man. Just like God doesn't want us to be sick. He doesn't want us to have demons. How, how are we supposed to push the kingdom being broke? And if God is in power of everything, including money, unrighteous mammon, don't you think he wants you to use it for his glory? But the problem is, is people are either in love with money, so much in love with money that they're stingy and they don't give. Or they're, fear, they're so fearful of losing money because they don't trust that God is all powerful. There's two sides of religion. I'm going to say it again. The first one, love money too much, you don't want to give it up. You're stingy. You're prideful like the, like the rich man, right, with Lazarus, the beggar. And what happened? He ended up in hell. 
Or the other side, you're so scared to spend money or give money because you think that you're going to go broke and be in poverty. That's called fear. And God didn't give us a spirit of fear. We're supposed to trust in him. He wants to use us like an ATM where he gives and we give back out. Give and give back out. And we become like a funnel. That's kingdom. I'm here to talk to you guys about the kingdom of God. Not religion. Amen. So I was going, there, I was going here with this. Deliverance. When y'all get delivered from demons tonight, or the ones who already have, this is, deliverance is about to break out. We're going to have all the prayer warriors that are going to pray. And it's not going to just be me. We're going to be laying hands throughout the crowd. Healing, deliverance, whatever it is. You got to be ready to receive. You don't come to God saying, God, prove that you're real. I'm coming to the altar. You say, God, I know you're real. I love you. And then he proves even more to you. You see, people come to the altar in Orlando, in our church. They come up real prideful. They come up like, yeah, I don't know. You t- tell me what God told you. You think God wants to move? He's, you, know, you know what he tells me sometimes? Don't say nothing. Just let, let, let somebody else pray for them. Keep going. Because they're coming to God with pride. They're coming to God saying, prove yourself. He already did. He came here. He died on the cross. He was buried in the rose. So you come ready and expecting. Everyone say faith. You come with faith and you receive. And I promise you, by you doing that, any demon dwelling in you will come out and go to the pit. Any sickness that's going on, you'll be healed. I I see it all the time. I know it's real. It says in the Bible that Jesus went to his hometown and he did not perform many miracles except for a a few healings because of their what? Unbelief. And it says in the Bible it amazed him. It was like, like, think about when you're amazed. What? Did they not hear about me going from city to city doing this? And they still look at me as the carpenter's boy? All right, only a few get healed. Did he keep trying? Please be healed. Please believe. No, he kept it pushing. So we're not worried if you don't get delivered or healed. Because worrying is not a God. Because we know it's not God that does it. I mean, it's not us that do it. That does it. It's God. So when we lay hands, the Holy Ghost is going to deliver you and heal you. But if you got doubt and a whole bunch of unbelief, you're going to block your own blessing. Just like when it comes to giving. People want to block their own blessing with fear and pride. It's a revelation. Make sure you give to the church you're submitted to. Who here is submitted to a church? Find a local church and submit to that church. By the way, just to give you all an announcement, we're going to be building a rock in Houston. Hallelujah. So, if you want to be updated with that, I need you guys to make sure you sign up for the discipleship course. And yes, I know that the, the course is tripping right now. I, like from what I heard, the, you talk, you can, but you can still sign up. Okay, it's not on our end; it's on their end. We're, we're, we've emailed them and everything. As soon as it's gonna be back up, but just sign up with your email because when it gets back up. We're going to send out a mass email saying, hey, it's time. Finish the discipleship course. Get plugged in on this school platform that we have, and you'll be updated daily. We're on there daily. We have Bible studies four times a week. You see these leaders right here? These are leaders right here. Leaders. They flew in today. Look, Pastor Benji preached last night. Got home. This man had a whole fever. He didn't understand. It was an attack. Still only slept two or three hours, got on the plane to come here to help out. With his wife, Deaconess Mia. They're both married, young. 24 and 22, 21. Young, on fire, married, casting out demons in the sick, winning souls. Sold out. Pastor Joel, his wife's at home with his little baby. He's still out here. He was in, with me in the field at the mall. We were evangelizing. We got so many encounters. God was moving. He'd been serving. He'd been out here just supporting everything that God is doing through, the, through, the, through this vision. Amen. Let's give it up for Pastor Joel, man. And then the production team, Deacon Kevin, 
was all night leading productions got on a, on a plane in the morning to come here and serve been holding a camera all the, all day with Berean look at them let's give it up for them man and then look at him this man has been Isaac has been playing the piano this entire time with no complaints and he served last night in the church in Florida so as you guys can see we love servants. Look at Melise came all the way. She was praying, and the Lord told her, "You know what? You need to go to you need to go to Houston." And someone confirmed it, and she just hopped on a flight, barely slept. You had service last last night, right? She didn't even she haven't slept. Oh my gosh! And our brothers from Kingdom Come Dallas. Who's from Kingdom Come? I want to hear you shout out, Jesus. They drove all the way from Dallas after their morning service, three to four hours to come here, get Airbnbs, and serve at this, at this revival. Pastor Mario and Kingdom Come. He called me, he said, hey bro, you need help? I said, yeah, he said, bet we're coming. Got 20 to 30 soldiers on deck like that to come down. That's Kingdom! All right, so again, in order to be delivered, you need to, you need to break legal right, and that's through confession, repentance, and forgiveness. You need to renounce things. Renouncing is saying, it doesn't belong with me. I command it to leave. It's an eviction notice, okay? You guys know what you're dealing with, right? So if you need deliverance from whatever you're dealing with, you need to confess it, repent it, and then renounce. You just say, I renounce. So if you need deliverance, if you need deliverance or healing, stand up. Y'all ready? Come up. And just get the people you trust to pray. Where's Pastor Carlina? She's okay? Oh, okay, okay, okay. She's resting, okay. All right. Okay. All right, so first things first, we're going to go through this. Say, Jesus, I confess all sins that I'm aware of and not aware of. And I ask you to forgive me of them. Like I did before, I want you to release out loud the things you need, you need to give up. If you're dealing with pornography, that's a big one. If you're dealing with lust, it's a big one. If you're dealing with the love of money or the fear of money and you're enslaved to mammon, confess it. If you're greedy or stingy, if you got doubt, fear, Confess it. It's not good. If, you're, if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend living in fornication, today it breaks. If you get delivered from these demons and you go back to your illegal demonic relationship, them demons coming back seven times fold. So after you get delivered tonight, break that relationship and tell that person to go see God. I'm telling you, you walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I can't force you. I just revealed the prescription. You know, I do know how a doctor gives you the prescription. Jesus gives me. I give it to you. You got a choice to take the medication or not. And this ain't pharmacia. This ain't witchcraft. This is kingdom, heaven. The Bible says to flee from fornication. Repent. Is there, girl, is there girlfriend and boyfriends in this building right now? Raise your hand. Y'all were highlighted in the back. Y'all too. And the Lord, the Lord, the Lord wants to use both of you, but you can't use you guys in fornication. Yes, you guys with the red polo. He can't use you if you guys are in fornication. It, it's it's serious. Because then you know who you let in. The Bible says, "Do not tolerate a certain spirit, or you will end up in her sick bed." The spirit of Jezebel. How many Jezebel spirits do we cast out up here? The Bible says Jezebel will run rampant in the last days. There's a lot of relationships that have Je Jezebel and Ahab all up in the midst. Woman controlling the man, man controlling the woman. And that's not a God. That's a whole demonic operation. And they're actually, and people don't even know, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to you. Raise your hand if you're in fornication, if you have a girlfriend, boyfriend. 
they're using you guys. The devil's actually using you to evangelize. He's using you to literally spread darkness. And then it's worse because you say you're a Christian. So now you're lukewarm. So now you're professing Jesus, but you're actually working for the devil. You're like a secret agent for the devil in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that he will spit you out of his mouth. Out of his body, he will spit you out like some throw up. You will literally go through a lot of tribulation. You are, you're going to go through some things because throw up stank and it sucks. If you're, if you're willing to repent tonight, are you guys married? You guys, you guys want to get married? Huh? Are you guys lusting? Benji and Mia, I'm going to tell you something. These two, when they started, when they first came to the church, he was all up in lust, all up in the clubs, gave up everything. She came into our house church with her boyfriend. And she ended the relationship because she manifested a demon in my house, all up on the, the floor, squirming around, like crazy deliverance. And she got baptized in the Holy Ghost. They didn't date nobody for about a, almost a year. And they waited for God to confirm that they were, that actually she prayed and said, God, show me who I'm supposed to marry. And God gave her a dream, or a dream, right, of him. And they didn't go with you. Oh, I had a dream of you. I, no. She went to Pastor Carlene. He came to me and he was like, I don't know. I want to make sure it's God. And we prayed. And we waited. And when God confirmed, we sat them both down and we said, look, you're not girlfriend, boyfriend. This ain't no boot up thing. We ain't in the world. You're courting to be able to get married. Now, Ben, I said, amen. And I told Pastor Benji, I said, Benji, do you understand you're getting ready, you're courting her to get married. Can you provide for your family? Because a man who cannot provide for his family is worse than a what? unbeliever so I told him that I told her I said look are you marrying him because you have daddy issues or you want to marry him or do you truly truly see him as a husband she said yeah they took their time for a while and then they got married you see I'm gonna say this people don't like this message I will preach against Jezebel to the day I die That demon's running, running rampant, man. I'm telling you. So, it's a testimony. Raise your hand again if you're in fornication. Just be real. Are you willing to give it up today? Love cannot be love unless God is in the midst because God is love. So if you're going against God's word, that's not love, that's lust. Who else? You're going to give it up? You're going to give it up? Who else? You're going to give it up? You're going to give it up? You're going to give it up. Look at all these people repenting. Praise God. We going to build a culture across the nations. Kingdom. They going to say, oh, they a cult. Yeah, we a cult. Whatever you want to say, we abide by the word of God. And we going to cast demons out and heal the sick. And we going to raise the dead. And we going to move in miracles. You can say whatever you want. But we going to heaven. Amen. So, for the people that raised their hand, I'm telling you again, last time, if demon, demons will get casted out of you, and when they do get casted out of you, it's for everybody. The Bible says when a demon leaves its home, it goes to waterless places seeking rest and finds none. Gets seven more wicked spirits than itself and comes back to its home to find it clean, swept, and garnished, and enters back in. And the state of the person will be, will be worse than the last. And so is it on to this wicked generation. Jesus was giving the Jews a revelation of what's going to happen. He was casting demons out in the synagogue. And the people were saying, you're casting out demons with demons. You're using the Lord, the Lord of flies, Beelzebub. He said, are you stupid? A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. He said, you know what's going to happen to you unbelieving people that I'm casting demons out of? They're going to come right back into you and you're going to be worse than you were before because you don't believe in me. And when you believe in him and you love him, you will follow his commandments. So, you, you see, we see a lot of mass deliverance. Deliverance, yeah, movements, but they ain't telling you what to do afterwards. After you get delivered from these demons, 
You need to seek God with everything you got because they're going to come back to watch you. I'm just keeping it 100. When I got delivered from demons, they came back. I saw them. Deliverance got me obedient to the word of God real quick. I thank God for his deliverance power and the ministry he's allowed in the body of Christ. Deliverance got me right, legal right. Amen. God has grace. So just because you sin, does a demon come in you? No. It's when you start working sin or worker of iniquity. You need to repent every day, confess and plead the blood of Jesus Christ every day. Say, Jesus, I confess to these things. Wash me. I repent. Thank you, Father. And he washes you every time. Every time. You don't got to be scared. You seek him and ask him to forgive you and he cleans you every time. It's when you stop seeking him and you go back to being a worker of sin when you become an open door for the devil. So after today, you're saying my whole life's changing. And see, a lot of you didn't know I was going to preach this. Some of you looking at me like this with your, wide, your eyes wide open. Ain't nobody tell you this. Today you're going to learn. You're going to learn today. Amen. 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 So. After you get delivered, you need to go home and you need to start seeking God. Get in your word. You don't have to read the whole Bible in one day. As long as you're making an effort to seek him daily, he sees your effort. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. Get plugged into a local church. Make sure you have a congregation of, of, of fellow believers that you can, you can, you can chill with, that you can, you can eat, eat, eat food with, play ball with. You know what I'm saying? Like for the woman of God, go, go, go do your nails together. You see what I'm saying? Because that's where the spirit of God moves in unity. So again, who's ready for deliverance? Okay. Now, I want everyone to say this. Say, Lord, I repent of my wicked ways. I turn away from the world. I turn away from all my sin. Thank you, Jesus, that you wash me right now with your blood. I forgive every person who's hurt me, harmed me wronged me I forgive them just as you forgive me again out loud I want you to say who you need to forgive right now say it out loud say I forgive and what they did come on I want people to get for real for real delivered tonight Jesus, deliver me from every wicked spirit. They are not my friends. They are my enemies. And I command them to come out of me. Right now, every demon will go straight to the abyss, to the bottomless pit. Say every spirit of infirmity, leave me right now in Jesus' name. So I'm going to start praying. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I want you all to stand up. I want you to relax. Put your hands down. Close your eyes if you want to. Don't be scared. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every unclean spirit to come up and come out in Jesus' name. I bind every unclean spirit and I command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. 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 Every principality, power, ruler of darkness, all the spiritual wickedness operating in high places, operating in any vessel, in the solar or the fleshly realm, I command you, bring her up here, bring her up here, come out, out, right there, right there, look at me, look at me. Come out of her. Out. Out. Leave. Ah. There we go. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Out. 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 Leave him out. Leave him out. Come out in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit come up and out. Hold it. Hold her arms. 
Hold her arms and bring her back. Bring her back. Mario, pray for her. I command every spirit of infirmity to loose. Every spirit of infirmity. Go pray. Go pray. Yes. Get Fred. What's Fred? That's fine. Go. I, 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 I. Every spirit of infirmity. Ow! I command the body to be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody... Who's dealing with colon cancer? Colon issues. You're dealing with colon cancer? Who's dealing with colon issues? The colon. You? Come up. Come up. You're dealing with colon issues? Yeah, like a lot of intestinal issues and other things like that. My whole body, really, like all my organs. Okay. I'm going to pray for you. Do you have any Freemason Freemasonry in your family? I have witchcraft. I don't know about Freemasonry. I think so, actually, on my dad's side. I saw your father and I saw Freemasonry. Who? Um, I don't know who it was. Uh, okay. We're going to break that altar. And the Lord, the Lord is going to begin the, what's called the process of healing. Look at me. Declare and decree scriptures about healing every day, three times a day. You go on Google and you look up verses for healing. And then you get them copied in your notes. And every day out loud you say them and believe them. Watch what God does with your whole body. I'm not kidding, bro. Are you going to do it? You're going to do it. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command full healing and every demon to leave. I break every generational altar of Freemasonry and his bloodline in the name of... Oh. Every altar of witchcraft, every spider, come out of his body now. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every spider spirit to leave his stomach, leave his organs in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you broke the generational altar and you're beginning the process of healing. Father Yahweh, show him what I mean. Revelation. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. God bless you. father or mother in their life or you had them in your life but you never had a relationship with them there's a spirit called the spirit of rejection and a lot of people need to renounce that spirit that spirit hey I'm going to tell you even people that are working everybody listen the spirit of rejection is a master spirit that brings in a lot of other spirits you get, you get delivered from the spirit of rejection, everything else leaves. 
So raise your hand if you're dealing with rejection. Be real. We're going to cast that demon out. I want you all to say this. Say, Jesus, deliver me from the spirit of rejection. Father, you love me. You created me. You gave me a plan and purpose. A destiny. Say, Yahweh, you love me. Yahweh, you love me. I forgive everybody who's hurt me, who left me, who rejected me. Jesus, I renounce the spirit of rejection. In Jesus' name, I'm going to pray now. Some of you are going to begin to weep and cry. That is, that is the proof. Of, some of you are already. And it's the proof of deliverance from that demon. I command every spirit of rejection to come up and come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command even the man in the back that's on the wheelchair, all the way in the back, his body to be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone put your hand out for him right now. I command him to be fully healed in Jesus' name. Every spirit of rejection, ow! Ow! Hey! Hey! Every spirit of rejection, leave! Back be healed in Jesus' name. Mind be healed in Jesus' name. Knees be healed in Jesus' name. Hey, jump up and down, man of God. You're healed. Fill me up. God, fill me up. Come on, everybody. Fill me up, God. presence of God. Man, his glory is tangible right now. Oh my gosh. Huh. You see right there, that is healing from rejection. Right there, they're hugging each other. You see that? That is the Lord healing. Wow. The love of God has released into the atmosphere. Sir. God bless you, man of God. So what just happened? Uh from the rejector, you know, having an issues with my mom. She's been suffering depression and just feel like, you know, I've been trying to help her for 25, 30 years, trying to separate myself from the from the hurt and the pain and just follow God, you know. You know, it just in my knees and my back, you know, I was in the military, my sciatic nerve, my knees, everything just hurt me, it been hurt me for 20 years, man, and I just I just thank God, man. What just happened right now? What just happened? I just don't feel no pain, you know what I'm saying? No pain. pain. Messed up my hands in my surgery when I when I, I had all uh they like said corporal tunnel you know from being in the military be out in the cold and everything my rotator cuff was messed up just you know I'm just always hurting been hurt for 20 years you know but you know through God man He is who He is I love Jesus we gonna keep pushing forward no weapon for him to get me so prosper no weapon for him to get you so prosper in the mighty name of Jesus and I give him all the glory and all the praise. Oh. 
Aleluya. Aleluya. Was your father in your life? Yes, sir. My best friend, man. He just be passed when I was 13. That's what happened. When he passed when you were 13, everything started to hurt. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just, because I heard, I heard father lists, which means you, he left at 13. He went to be with the Lord. And, and that's, what, that's what caused a lot of spiritual and physical pain. So you know he's in heaven. And you know you have a heavenly father. Okay. I'm going to pray for you right now. For any deliverance that you might need, come move this way. All right. What's your name, my brother? Jason. Jason. You're a man of God, bro. You're anointed. Do you worship the Lord a lot? Can you, can you sing? Why are you laughing? Pray for you for deliverance. Let's see what's up. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command any spirit that came in when he was 13, when he lost his father that caused depression, any type of pain spiritually or physically, come out of him. Come out of him in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything leave. And I command his body to be made whole. The pain will not come back. I command every lie of arthritis, every lie of infirmity, leave. Leave his bones. Leave his marrow. Leave his back and his knees. Say la Every chain be broken on his legs and knees. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Father, after tonight, everything changes. Yay. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. What's your favorite worship song? Lift your hands right now in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. 
down right now in the name of Jesus. Come down right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. No weapon. Ain't nothing out there that can, that can satisfy you or me. Only God can do it. We are hurt by people that God said don't trust. Put your trust in him. He said put your trust in me, not people. Come on now. And we upset when people disappoint us. He's already told you can't trust nobody but me. Well, let's keep that. Amen. Let me tell you something. I had a dream about this. This guy in my dreams. And I, I was just speaking to my brother, Pastor Mario, and he said, he said, bro, I feel like when you, the Rock Houston starts, he's going to be a mighty servant. And I said, yeah. I heard the Lord say, worship leader. You're going to lead worship. God bless you. So before you even said it, I said, man, I'm going I'm to see him again in Orlando anyway, so. <laughs> I was gonna follow you anyway, brother man. So I try to, you know, and you know, be a part of ministry. Oh, amen. I want to be a part of ministry, you know, and just do what God wants me to do, man. Because you know, we're not doing what God wants you to do. That's what the, that's where the depression comes in. Because you're not moving on, moving on. I mean, you're moving on your time, and all these things we're pulling into our bodies, all the outside stuff. It's, 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 it's temporary. It's not even real. And it's, 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 it's hurting. Like you said, the sex. Man, you see the people, what's going on? Can you imagine having a soul tied with somebody with a whole bunch of stuff in them? Come on, man. All the twerking and all the... Man, it's a, it's a distraction. Wow, man. Don't give me my love, you know. Women. But at the end of the day, man, it don't bring you no peace. You're not fulfilled. Man. Hey man, y'all just y'all be blessed, man. Brother. He was just in the wheelchair. <laughs> he was just in the wheelchair. Hallelujah. Who got delivered? Raise your hand. Who needs some deliverance still? Raise your hand. Where's all the prayer warriors? Where y'all at? Come up, come up again. We're going to regroup. I want to do something real quick. All the people right here, do all y'all need deliverance? Okay. If you don't need deliverance, if you could clear the altar and let people come up that need deliverance, that'd be amazing. Because we're going to have some people, we're going to have them come up here right now. So we know who needs it. So come up here if you need deliverance. Not if you're guessing, but like for real. We, You got to get delivered right now. Amen. Fully. It's going to be good. Where you need deliverance from? Was your calling in here, Texas? I said calling like, like about five minutes, ten minutes ago. You heard that? That's why you came up. Okay, come up. I'm going to pray for after. I want to do this real quick for everyone that needs deliverance. And then I want all the prayer warriors, you guys want to go down there and prepare. I want you guys to lay hands for like, you pray, and if they if they start getting delivered, they start getting delivered. If they if they don't, keep keep pushing. Okay. The spirit of the Lord is here, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. It doesn't take eighty minutes. It doesn't take an hour. Stand by. Hold on one second. I got you. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demon to come up and come out now. Every unclean spirit, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I command by the authority in Luke ten nineteen. Every unclean spirit, ow! Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Everything go. Ow! Ow! Every unclean spirit, ow! Out of the chest, out of the stomach. So you deal with colon issues. 21 
I ain't been able to use the bathroom on my own. I have to take medicine. Have you given your life to Christ? Yeah. Fully? I, I be scrambling back and forth. What you been dealing with? Well, I throw my vapes down there today and uh, sexual immorality. Lust? Yeah. What happened when you were little? I was raped. By a man? Yeah. And that's what caused everything? Pretty much. A spirit came in. That's the same spirit that causes intestinal issues. The same spirit that causes you to think. How about this? That causes you to lust, period. Is the same spirit that's causing intestinal issues. Because I just seen the spirit of snake. A snake wrapped around your intestines. A long snake. So a witchcraft spirit came in through the rape. There's witchcraft in your family? They used to. Who? My mama used to play with it. Your, mama, your mom played with witchcraft, which led to the rape, which led to the spirit coming in, causing sexual immorality and also the sickness. The Lord wants me to let you know he loves you. The way he created you, which is the way you're, you are. And his image and likeness. Not in the way that the enemy wants you to be. Does that make sense? Are you willing to truly repent of sexual immorality today? Yeah. Like for real. You've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. You've done it many times. Yeah. You've given up. Almost like doubt. Yeah. Like you don't believe and you start, you're kind of like stuck in your ways. Thinking that that's, like, that's who you are. Yeah, he gave me a dream that I'm, I'm going to have kids. And it's just hard for me to like a man. You know what kids also represent? What? A ministry. You're going to have a ministry to preach to the LGBTQ community. And you're going to win souls. And you'll have physical children. You're even going to adopt one. Yeah, he told me that. What? He told me that. I seen you adopting a boy. Yeah. And a girl. Two children. You're going to have children and adopt children. And you're going to have spiritual children because you're going to have a ministry. Wow. Do you truly want this? I do. It's going to take suffering. It's going to take doing what your flesh doesn't want to do. I'm going to pray for you. But you're going to be tested big time. Because this ministry is going to win a lot of souls. I got tested big time when I came to Christ. Big time. But I just endured. I went through the suffering and said whatever. And I just got beat up in a good way. And now look what's happening. Do you want that? What's your name? Jessica. So you want that, Jessica? You got baptized today? No. You got baptized in the past? Yeah. And did you truly surrender when you got baptized? No. So are the baptism tubs still filled up? Are the baptism tubs still filled up? Tell the people who are leading baptism to fill up a tub. Please. Amen, Pastor. Thank you. You want to get baptized? And for real, surrender. Don't make, don't, don't waste time in water. You truly want to do this? You're going to go through it. Here. I was addicted to pornography, addicted to women. I was, I was sexual. I was probably more sexual, in, sexually immoral than you. I have more women than most, in one week than most people have it in a year. I was, I was, I was demon possessed. I had demons in me. So I'm a prick, but I had, I had to fight. I had to say no and put my foot down and say, I don't care what it feels like. I ain't doing it. And be blessed. I was wild with it. So you're going to do this for real. 
Vai, não faz isso. I command every python spirit to come out of her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of her. Come out of her. I rebuke that spirit of python. I command you to unwrap sataburubu. Come out of her stomach. Say, Father, restore her identity. Restore her identity, which is in Christ. To be fruitful and multiply, to have children, adopt children in the ministry. Father, I'm going to say it because I heard it. Music too. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, even music, producing music, producing music. In the name of Jesus Christ, today everything changes, Father. Hey, as she goes in that water and gets dunked, Lord, I pray it's a true baptism of faith that today she truly changes and fights her flesh, fights the enemy with the truth and the word of God and the spirit of the Lord. Father, give her everything you gave me when I first started fighting right now. Strengthen her, Lord, and impart it to win many souls to the nations as an evangelist, a prophetic evangelist. Thank you, Father. No fear. No more pride. No more rejection. That spirit that came in when she was raped, I command you to come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Salia. Every Luciferian spirit come out too. Romo say, I command that part of spirit to unwrap from my mind and leave it, go to the abyss in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave her. Leave her in Jesus' name. Leave her. Say, I forgive the man who raped me. I pray that you bless him, Lord. Forgive him. Have mercy on his soul. Wow. He committed suicide. Say, Lord, I release forgiveness. Only you know if he made it to heaven or hell. But I don't hold on no more. In Jesus' name. I rebuke that spirit of suicide too. Come out of her. Come out of her. Every spirit of suicide, come out of her. You will not attach to her too. And you will not kill her. You come out. Ow! Ow! I command every pot down spirit and spirit of suicide to leave. Every spirit of divination leave. Leave in the name of Jesus. Leave in Jesus' name. Hey. Amen. You ready to get baptized? Let's get it. <laughs> you from the old? The Lord told me to move here. And uh, I was I was um I was into a lot of drug dealing and also on drugs and he delivered me. And since I came here, I've been actually working on like my minutes, my music and his So you've been working on music? Yeah. Yeah, I've been working on music. Produce beats. Produce beats? Rap too, but produce beats. You have an ear. Watch how far it goes. You already know. I'm gonna see y'all there. The power yours is a glory forever. We sing it. Yours, come on, is the kingdom yours? Is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Amen. Hey! 
Every demon come out of his body. Everything leave his mind. All double mindedness. All witchcraft leave his mind. Everything go. Ow! 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 Everything go. Everything go. Everything go. In Jesus' name, everything go. Everything go. Out of him. Out of him. Out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him all the way. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything leave. Everything go. Everything go. Loose. Loose. Everything go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ow. Everything go. Ow. Everything go. Ow. 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 Leave in Jesus' name. Ow. 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 Leave her. Leave her. I'm going to go through the crowd. Please clear the way. I'm going to lay hands. Yeah. Huh? Do you pray for my dad? What's his name? Tito. 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 I'll pray for your dad. Right now. Give me your hand. Let's pray together. Say, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, save my dad, Tito. Huh? Oh, it's Victor. Victor. Sorry. Say, Lord. Lord. I pray for Victor. I pray for Victor. With Pastor Rich. Huh? That's my name. Yes. Your name is Rich. Yeah. Help my dad in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, man. What's up, my boy? Good? My father. Hey, you swole, man. Nice crocs. They're on backwards. My son does the same thing all the time. God bless you, man. What's up? You okay? Right. Right, I'm a mommy. Huh? This? Amen. Go down. You guys ready? You gonna clear out the way? So Fred's gonna clear out the way. I'm gonna lay hands quickly. Whatever you need, I'm gonna pray. of Jesus. If you, need, if you need prayer as I go by, just lift your hands up so I know. Father, in the name of Jesus, give her peace. 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 In the name of Jesus, peace. Sound minds. In the name of Jesus. Bless this family in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless this family in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Financial breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this kingdom financer in Jesus' name, Lord. Give him the strength the creative ideas and wisdom in Jesus' name. Every generational curse be broken over this over this mother and daughter in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, come out of her. Come out of her. Leave. Leave. Hey, Abasorri. Everything breaks right now in Jesus' name. Oh, I heard the Lord say, 
acceleration acceleration hey abasore in jesus name robocose i pray for the head of the family in jesus name i break the spirit of poverty off their life in the name of jesus in any aspect any unclean spirit trying to hurt them yes abakaso bless them bless them bless them bless them bless them in jesus name sorry everything go come out of him come out ow 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 let's go come out in the name of jesus christ everything leave everything go everything go in jesus name everything go in jesus name everything go in jesus name come out of her come out of her fear go fear go every spirit of rejection and fear come out now hey leave leave you can't stay lord fill it with your love and peace power praying the holy ghost with me praying the holy ghost open up your mouth and pray in faith louder louder keep going don't stop there you go get baptized right now in faith there you go don't stop woman of god you just receive your prayer language everything go everything go in jesus name everything go in jesus name break all religion lord in jesus name yeah lead the way Bless him in Jesus' name. Bless him. Bless him, Lord. Fill him with truth and reveal yourself to him in a big way. I pray, Lord, that you show him how real you are and that he'll never, he'll never doubt again. I pray that you have angels surrounding him, Lord. Deliver him of every unclean spirit now. Everything go. All anger come out of him. I command every spirit of anger. Yes. 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 All anger and lust. Out. Out of his belly. Out. All of you. Out. Rage and anger come out. Hey. Leaf. Leaf. In Jesus' name. Leave his stomach. Leaf. Yep. Come out of him. All anger, all rage, all lust. I break every generational curse off of him too. Remo soul. And any witchcraft that came in through any fornication with any woman that he dated. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break all witchcraft off of him too. Today's a fresh start. I just heard the Lord say this too. You will not be locked up. You will not go to prison. You're not going to be locked up. I don't know why I heard that. The Lord's going to use you. He's going to use you. The devil wants you to be have rage and wants you to just go like be angry. But God wants you to have love. You're called to be an evangelist. Pray something, Father. Impart everything I have, double portion. Every demon leaves today, and I thank you, Father. This man is going to be used by you, Lord, in this end times revival as an evangelist. Bless him and protect him, and thank you for his praying mother and father. Thank you for this this family, Lord. Let him lead, Lord. Teach him in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. God bless you. Yes, you are holy, holy. You are holy. Walk. Without that, huh? can he walk without that? But it's hard. The doctors diagnosed you with Parkinson's and arthritis, and you take ten medications a day. Do you believe in the healing? I'm going to say this. Do you believe you can be healed by the blood of Jesus Christ? What's his name? Was he ever a minister? He was a deacon. I just seen he was a man of God. He was a minister. Come here. I command right now the hand to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command every spirit to come out of him. 
every unclean spirit to come up and come out of him in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that's been tormenting him and lying to him. I command every lie that was spoken into his soul to be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, everything's uprooted. I command the entire body to be made whole in the name of Jesus. Every unclean spirit causing infirmity, come out of him. Leaf. And I command the entire body to be made whole for this minister, this man of God, this leader in the kingdom of God. Father God, may his last years here on earth be a peace, joy, and good health. Father, I pray when he walks, it's different. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. I command all witchcraft to come off of him too. Hey. And I'll fear leave too. In Jesus' name. Get up. Come on, walk, man, a guy. For help him up. Come walk. Come walk. Come walk. Lord God Almighty. Take one step. One step. With your right leg, try to take one step. You can do this, man of God. You turned 80 years old two weeks ago. You know God can have you live to 120 if he wanted to. You told God you want to live only till 80 years old. He spoke a curse over your life. Why would you tell? Why, why would you? Why would you say you want? You only, you only want to live till eighty? Because now it's now now it's it's actually manifesting now. I want you to break that curse. I want you to break the curse that you put over your life. Do you want to, or you want to, or you want to stay with it? You want to just come into agreement with it? I'll come back and pray for you. I want you to. I want you to come to an understanding that you cannot put word curses over your life. God can have you live longer than 80 with good health. He loves you. And Abraham was lived to 120. Okay, no worries then. You can bring it here. He's a man of God. If, if, he cho if he's chosen this... Tell him. I say this, the Lord can have you live past 80, but you have to, you have to want that. You cannot sit there and say, I, like, put a word curse over your life, because this is not normal. The Lord wants to heal you of this. This is not, this, this is not the Lord. The Lord would not have you have this and, and, and die. And, and, no, he wants you to have good health. I want you to speak to is your, us, a daughter, a granddaughter, your wife. I want you to speak to them, and I'll come back. Lord willing, I will come, try to come back. I want you to break the, break the curse off your life. He said that his wife is not going to forgive him. Have you forgiven him? Fully forgiven him. You bring it up? What, adultery or something? So you, you have to forgive and you have to come out of condemnation. The Lord has washed you with his blood. It doesn't matter what anybody says, you're forgiven. You see, this is a curse. This is spiritual. If he would break this and you would, and you would, okay, I need you both, daughter and granddaughter, to chop it up with them and get them to come to repentance. I can't spend all day. So please, this is the route to this. Wife, forgive him fully and don't bring it up no more. But don't bring it. Okay, tell her that. Tell her I said that. Tell her I said forgive. You can do this. Forgive your husband fully and don't bring it up no more. 
forgive your husband fully and don't bring it up no more because you could actually be putting curses on him. But do you keep bringing it? You have to actually repent to God about that. Talk to him about it. Huh? Yeah, I'll pray for y'all. Come here. I'll pray for y'all. I'm gonna pray. Sorry about that. I'll pray for you guys right now. You gotta let go. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for both of them, Lord, that you would give them strength, Lord. Give them strength to get through this. Give them the, the spirit of counsel, Lord. The spirit of counsel. The seven spirits of God, one of them is the spirit of counsel, Lord, that they'll be able to counsel, have wisdom for this situation. I pray every curse is broken. And I, I, I prophesy, I say this right now in the name of Jesus. The curse will not follow them. These two, it will not follow. Today it breaks, regardless of what they decide to do. It breaks off the bloodline. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone say amen. Amen. Talk to them. For real. Hey, this week. God, we pray for Emily, Lord, that she be completely healed of whatever she's dealing with. Father God, loose your angels. May your word not return void to you, Lord. By your stripes, you've been, that we're healed. All right, God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, that word is activated, Lord, and it, it heals her. The sword of the Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, it's done. What you need, guys? What you guys need? What do you need prayer for? Okay, I'm going to start praying. You ready? I need all of y'all to be ready. I can't, I can't talk to all every like council. We got we gotta move quick, okay? Y'all ready for this? All right, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every generational curse be broken. Every demon come out. Everything go. Everything go. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Fear, rejection, pride, witchcraft. Leave him. Leave him. In Jesus' name. And the spirit of Leviathan too. Lord, I pray that you break him down into humility. I pray that you give him a spirit of meekness and let him be humble. Humble him, Lord. Any spirit of Jezebel following, following him, causing him to lust. Lord, I pray that you remove Jezebel out of his life, however it needs to be. And save his soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, man of God. Okay. Come on. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless her, protect her, her and her daughter. Every unclean spirit that's been anything in their, their home, any spirit that's been operating in their home, Lord, I pray that you would remove it with your angels, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you need? Okay. Right there. It's an orphan spirit. You're dealing with an orphan spirit. We have brother and father in your life. At all. You're, you're dealing with an orphan spirit. It's going to come out of you and everything's going to change. You ask for poverty, homelessness, lust, all these things, but the actual root is orphan. So I'm going to command the root to come out and you're going to see things shift. Submit to the word of God and seek him. Now is the time. And your, your family will be okay. I promise you, he forgives you. God is not a condemning God. He loves you. And he wants you to literally know that. He wants you to know how much he loves you. But if you live in the lie, he can't help you. Because you're not accepting his love. So I want you to say, I renounce the orphan spirit. Say, I command it to come out of me. Say, I command it to come out of me. Come out of her. Ow! 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 Out of her. Ow. All the way out. Leave her. 
out the entire demonic operation. Poverty, lust, rejection, everything. Fight! Out of her all the way. Out of her all the way. Leaf. 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 Ow. Ow. Leaf. Go. Ow. To the abyss. I bind that orphan spirit. Hey, how my sire. And every demon that came with it. Come out of her. Come out of her. Elise, come here. Come out of her. Put your hand on her head. Say, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything. Come out. Father, keep him out of fornication. Free him from any anger, rejection, and lust. Father, oh, slebo, slamasia. Are you a business owner? Starting a business, yeah. I heard the Lord say business owner. You're starting a business. The Lord's going to bless your business by your obedience and repenting from fornication. Don't ever go back and God will prosper you in ways you can't imagine. And he will provide a wife for you. I'm telling you, bro, you are a strong man of God, obviously. But even spiritually, he wants you to get strong. Don't follow that witch, Jezebel, bro. After today, everything changes. Amen. Hands up. Right now, Father God, fill them with your fire. Speak in tongues with me. Yes, Sakarabaso. Rekia Labakoto. Serra Mayo Robo Bokese. Hey! Roboke Ramaso. Every spirit that's been tormenting him, leave. Hey! Keep going. Yes, celebrate the feet of the gospel of peace. He's gonna preach your word and win souls, Lord. This is your evangelist, your business owner. Say, Mela, my sorry. Belly. What are you praying for? You are holy. Sing, Lord God Almighty. Okay. Lord God Almighty. You guys keep your team out of the court. Okay. Okay, y'all, okay, two options. I can be really nice or I can be really real and keep it 100. What do you guys want? Keep it, keep it real. Okay. I see in the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab combination. Do you run the relationship? Yes, I do. And you submit to her? So, uh, yeah. She, she controls you. You feel that way, right? You do too, right? This is a Jezebel and Ahab combination. I see it in your eyes, and I can see it in your eyes. There's demons in the house because Jezebel operates in witchcraft. Bow. I'm gonna break it off for you. The prescription is gonna be repentance or fornication. Don't get married yet. Wait till you guys are delivered. Do you depend on her for finances? Do you depend on her for finances? A lot. She controls you with money. The spirit operating, because she's been hurt by so many men. I told you I could be real, or I could be candy cane. Y'all want me to be real? You know why? Because we love them. This is what a prophet does, brings correction. You understand? So you could be broken and you could be freed. I highly suggest, if you were part of our, our ministry, I would say stop dating. Seek God. Get more deliverance. Forgive the men who hurt you. Forgive your mother. Why you look at him like that? Um, because our marriage was prophesied by God. By who? God? So there's two things. Either whoever prophesied to you, who prophesied to you? <laughs> you? No. Passion Java. Passion Java. I'm going to say this. You can take this prophetic word that was just confirmed. Am I, right? Am I wrong or right? I just called it out. You said there's spirits in your house. Listen. You said there's spirits in your house. I know because that's a, that's a Jezebel. Jezebel comes with witchcraft. You know what Jezebel likes to do? Oh, rule men. Where's my wife at? Babe, get my wife. 
Pastor Carlene, come here. She'll talk to you. I'm going to talk to you because you're a man. You need to get delivered from that spirit and not depend on nobody to provide for you financially. The Bible says a man provides for the family. And a man who cannot provide for the family is worse than an unbeliever. You want to you hear the truth? Wait until this is, the, this is confirmed. An Ahab spirit will literally side with Jezebel and, and literally empower it. She needs to get delivered. You're, you need to get delivered. I'm just, you know, bro, I'm telling you because we got delivered. It's just crazy how I'm saying all this and I don't know you. And you've seen snakes. That's a witchcraft spirit. The python spirit. You should have the fear of the Lord and back, out and back up and seek God. Talk to her. I'm going to keep going. I pray the Lord blesses and protects you in Jesus' name. I bless y'all. I hate fornication. Who else hates fornication? See, not too many people said nothing. What you need prayer for? I heard it. You know, you know why I said it? Because when I came over here, I heard there's more fornication. And I looked at you and I, the Lord told me, you need to repent of it. The key to all this is actually, and let me say, you know, how that, you know how that's a Jezebel and Ahab combination? You want me to, want me to keep it real or you want me, to, you want me to keep it? So what I see is the actual Jezebel spirit operating in you and Ahab or you. Because you run the relationship, don't you? Yes. And you low-key low kind of control her sometimes. Yes. Angry? Yes. Mean to her? Yes. Verbally abusive. Yes. How did I know all that? Because the Lord wants you guys to be freed. Do you have issues with your mother? No. How's your mother right now in your life? She, we're she's my best friend. Did your mother raise you? Yes. Was your father in your life? Yes. What, what did your mother do to cause you to want to rule over women I think it was more of my dad your dad I have issues with my dad we don't, we don't connect so it, okay he me, but he didn't we didn't like we did he wasn't he was a dad he, he was financially there but he wasn't like a, you know can I tell you what you're called to do you're apostolic you're called to go to the nations look I'm sorry I've seen it for real for real going to get any more detail. I'd rather tell you in person alone just to honor your mother. Deeper things. But I'll tell you this. It doesn't matter. Break the generational curse today. And literally repent of everything. For real, bro. I hate seeing these situations because it breaks my heart. I see people come to me all the time. Oh yeah, I need to live. I'm like, repent of fornication. And they think, oh, he's just wrong. And then there's pastors over there prophesying over people saying, you're supposed to get married. Never met them. Didn't get to know them. Nothing, bro. Just telling people to get married. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's wrong. That's wrong, bro. People need to grow in Christ before they even think about marriage. For real. I'm, you know what I'm saying? You're a smart dude, bro. Are you guys willing to repent today? For real? That's your deliverance. It's your repentance. For real. You're apostolic, bro. And you're called to be a teacher. You're going to teach. You're going to teach women and children. You have a very nurturing heart. You do have a, you, you are white. You know, people say wife-like material. You are. Paul says in the Bible, it's better, to, it's better to marry than to burn with passion. So my opinion is to get marriage counseling before you get married. But if you guys see each other as forever thing, which is deep, get freed first, bro, through your repentance of lust. Are you dealing with pornography issues? Are you in the past? You know. I was getting a new woman. Give it all up today. I'm going to pray for you guys. I'm going to pray that the Lord will start to break you guys down. You want that? Yes, sir. How do you feel about this? I'm um, just kind of like overwhelmed. But like... It's a lot. Because you love him. Make sure that God is in the midst, that it's not lust. I'm not saying you guys don't love. But I say when God's not being obeyed in a situation, he's not going to dwell in it. That's fight a lot. I, I'm telling you, that's the, that's the root, bro. So what if you guys are, if potentially meant to get married, the devil will try to destroy it before it even happens. So if you already are seeing bad fruit, separate me, brother and sister in Christ. 
grow in the word, wait, get marriage counseling, and then when you have peace in your heart, bro, when you've forgiven your dad, when you broke the generational curse through your obedience, same thing with you, when you flee from fornication, not depending on another man to, to, to fulfill you, but the Lord, that's when you come together and it'll be more beautiful than anything. That's when you have children that are blessed for generations. That's when it'll be, bro, it's, it sucks in the beginning, but it's so worth it. He knows the pain that you guys are going to go through, and he knows the risk. But if you don't risk in Christ, you don't have no faith. Can you guys promise me you'll do that? Because I really see you guys have a call in ministry. But it's being prolonged because of this, fornication. All right, I'm going to pray for you guys. Hold this. Father, I pray for this couple, Lord, that today, Lord, fornication breaks. And instead of being a couple, their brother and sister in Christ, getting to know each other in Christ, Lord, and that they seek your word, deliverance, Lord, and healing from anything with mother and father issues, Lord, so that they won't divide, they won't fight no more, they'll come together in love and peace. Father God, you want them to be in joy. You don't want them to be in division. So we rebuke the spirit of division. We break every generational altar. We rebuke the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab today. Father, I pray that you deliver my brother as he repents and, rep and gets really into your word, Lord. You begin to show him more. And I pray, I pray he studies these spirits to know what they are, the characteristics, so he doesn't move in it. Same thing for this woman of God. Thank you, Father, for their obedience, their openness, for their, their, them trusting you and trusting me, your messenger, Lord. Thank you for them. I plead the blood of Jesus over their mind. I plead the, the blood of Jesus over their soul. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what? I like you guys. You know what? Because you're receptive. I actually feel like you guys are going to change. That's rare. I never see that. God bless you guys. Come on. Pray for you. Ready? Come out in Jesus' name. Everything go. Leaf, 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 leave him, leave him at the mouth, come out of him. All rejection come out. And any generational spirit of suicide loose from his neck. Leaf. Come out of him. Ow! 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 Out of his stomach. There we go. Out all the way. All the way. There you go, my brother. I pray you bless him, Father. Increase his prophetic gift, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, he's your servant, Father God. Keep that servant heart, prophetic gift increase in Jesus' name. Thank you for him as well, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that he's going to be loving, not angry. That he's going to have a lot of joy in his heart. Bless this evangelist in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you bless the Father, too, for being a man of God, coming to you, God, and, and, and taking care of his family, Lord. Free his free him of anything as well in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, man. Healing for what? It's like really complicated. I got Max Andrews, so it's like heavy metals and gun metals and gold. Like I heard this by the Spirit. I heard this by the Spirit quickly. I heard dishonor. I heard that because of dishonor, you put a curse on yourself for dishonoring other men and women of God. Does this resonate with you and make sense? Kind of. Speaking against God's anointed when they're even making a mistake. You know Saul? Saul was a demon-possessed king. But David never dishonored him. Why? Because he was mantled and anointed by God regardless of his mess up. We don't dishonor men of God and women of God when we see issues. Now, does that resonate with your spirit? A lot. Are you willing to repent of this? Okay, so I want you to say this, woman of God. You are a woman of God. The Lord showed me this. Say, I confess it. I confess. Thank you for re revealing the root. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing it. Lord, I confess my dishonoring Jeremy and my dad and my mom and any other leader, any other pastor um, at Upper Room or any other church. God, I repent for dishonoring them because you put them there. Amen. Come out of her. Every unclean spirit that's been, yep. Ow! Ow! Everything that's been tormenting her mind, causing double mindedness, I rebuke that mind controlling spirit. Everything leave her mind, all the tentacles, unwrap, unwrap in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command the body, the blood, everything to be healed. I pray during, oh, during this process, Father God, she's going she's gonna to be healed and have a healing ministry. She's going to love people so much, Lord. I even see her really reading the book, A Tale of Three Kings. Lord, I pray she reads that book. And that she learns honor. Teach her honor so that she won't curse her bloodline anymore. 
Rebocosoli. She will have kids. Sakia Rabosori. Husband too. Yes, Rebo. Perfect. In Jesus' name. God bless you. The root of your issue was dishonor. Learn dishonor. A tale of three kings. Read the book. God bless you. Hold on, I'm pray for her, then I got what's up? What do you need? I wanted to pray for my father. Uh, and Is he murderous? Angry? Yeah, he's full of um, anger towards my mom. I've seen him very angry and abusive. Murderous in his heart. Yeah. Does he have a brother? Yeah, he does. And he has issues with his brother. Um, from what I know, I'm not, I'm not too sure about it. He does. Rejection towards his brother. I'm going to pray for something for you. Do you have a sister? Yeah. Are you and your sister close? He had issues in the past. And it seems to happen regularly. Like the enemy's always trying to divide you guys. It's a generational curse in your family to divide siblings because you're actually called to do ministry with your sister. Just like your dad was with his brother. I'm going to pray for you and your dad. Is there division in your family? A lot. I've seen an altar of division. The Lord's going to deliver you right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. You've been praying a lot. Every altar of division in the name of Jesus Christ be broken right now in the bloodline. Hey. Hey. I pray for her, for her, her, her dad and her dad's brother that they come and reconcile. And that they'll get off any type of alcohol, whatever they're dealing with, Lord. The anger and the, whatever it is. That they'll get healed and clean. And I pray for unity with her and her sister, Lord. I see digital ministry. I see you guys doing digital ministry. I seen you in New York City. I seen you having a podcast. I seen the Lord using it because you're very intellectual and your sister's very like has a good personality, real like real like joyful, sassy. That's what I heard. And I seen you both having a podcast that would go viral. Everything's broken off your bloodline now. You're gonna see your dad change. It's all Jesus. <laughs> it ain't me. Definitely ain't me. I bless you. You have a very pure heart. And that's why God blesses you. The pure heart of shall see God. You deal with you deal with fear. A lot of anxiety. Depression. It's a whole operation. Yes, you've been hurt. But it feels like the, the, it's been it's been like a magnetic force pulled to you. Not just through him, other people too. You're constantly being hurt. It's a generational spirit of Leviathan. It's been in your bloodline for a while. Am I right or wrong? Yes. That altar is going to break right now. And you're going to get delivered from that spirit. For, that, for, God, look at my, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I speak to that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to leave tonight. I bind the spirit of Leviathan. And I break that altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey. Out of her. All rejection, all fear and anxiety, and Leviathan. Any, any suicidal thoughts too. So horrible. I plead the blood of Jesus over her mind. Lord, I pray. I seen you working in a preschool. And I seen the Lord even saying he's going to open a preschool for you if you attempt for it. Because you love children. You're great with children. You cannot trust men because of how you've been hurt by men. To the point where you can't even trust me. You doubt me. And it's because of your doubt for men. You need to forgive all the men who hurt you for real and you'll be delivered. Or not, if not, you'll be bound. I cannot, I cannot force you. You're even angry right now. Yes, you are. A little bit. I can see it in your eyes. You need to let go. I'm serious. Or you'll always have you'll always never be satisfied it'll always torment your mind even when he's trying to do the right thing you'll always think he's doing the wrong thing you'll always come at him and put condemnation on him and you know what the, de the devil will eventually do if you keep doing that break up the marriage and then you'll be alone which is what he wants to isolate you but if you forgive the men who's hurt you you want me to be real you want me to be candy cane quick okay y'all want me to be real okay you're gonna need to forgive to right now tonight you're going to need to look at him in his eyes and say, I forgive you for everything you've done. And you need to confess to your husband everything other men have done to you. Father, uncle, anybody. 
and you need to cry your brains out and hug him. And that will be your deliverance. And you'll see your, you see your eyes are shifting in a good way now. The spirit's going down because it knows it's coming out. You're a woman of God and you've been tormented in your mind a lot. I can feel it. It sucks. That's why I have to be tough love with you right now. Because if I don't, you won't break. Do you want, do you want, you want results or do you want just me laying hands and saying, Jesus, that's it? Results. So you talk to him right now and you really mean it. If you got anything in your heart, you confess and say, I feel this and I'm letting it go right now at this revival. And there's heaven is here. You'll get delivered right here. Go ahead. Do your thing. Hallelujah. Hey. She hasn't walked. Hold on. If you guys want food, make sure you guys get food over there. There's some good food. Go buy it. Support. When's the last time you walked? Since February 2020. How have you felt since you went outside? How'd you feel? No, when you left here to go to go handle whatever you got to handle, what did you feel? Be real. Be blunt. Just be blunt. I had faith, but I doubt myself. I know. I can see it in your in your. See it. So much doubt. Okay, Lord. Do you guys have verses on healing? Do you recite them every day? How many times did, Dan did Daniel pray, Tyler? How many, how many times did Daniel pray a day? Anybody know? How, when, when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, right? How many times did he pray? When Paul was dealing with the issue of a thorn in his flesh, he prayed how many times? I want, this is the prescription for y'all. Three times a day healing scripture. Bro, I had a disease that doctors said were incurable. I'm not capping. I'm not just saying this to say this. I doubt it. But God healed me. You have no idea what I've seen. I've seen too many. You have to believe. The Lord wants you to believe and not be mad at him no more. Are you willing to go through this faith journey? I'm going to keep it 100. What does his life even mean? You're going to walk. The Lord, that's why I texted him yesterday. Because the Lord told me to text him. Randomly. He told me you're going to walk. He's not a liar. And I've seen people who can't walk get up out of wheelchairs. That have been bound for 20, 30 years. Multiple times. I can give you testimony after testimony. But the Lord showed me he wants to take you through a process. I'm going to pray for you again. And you, could, you already had, but you said it, you got doubt. And Jesus did not perform many miracles in his hometown because of unbelief. So I could pray for you. <laughs> but if the Lord wants you to have faith, and that's his will, he ain't going to heal you. Because he wants you to understand that he already healed you. If you don't know he already healed you 2,000 years ago, you'll always think you're not. It's just like faith. And, but think about salvation. Are we in heaven right now? Then how you know you're going to heaven? Faith. Healing is like that. You, don't, you haven't seen it yet, but you know it's done. A paycheck. Who works? Do you have a job? And you get paid every two weeks, right? How do you know you're going to get paid every two weeks? Faith and testimony because you've been paid before. Testimony breeds trust. Remember the, remember the sermon? So you have to have trust in God through other people's testimonies and reading the word. I promise you in the name of Jesus Christ, you will stand up and run and walk more than you. I'm, I'm so serious. Yeah. Yesterday at Mantles, when um, the apostle prayed for me, he put his hands on like my knees and my back started going for it, like aligning. Wow. Okay. So are, are, you, are you ready to go on this journey and for real, for real? I'm going to pray for you too. 
I'm going to pray for your knees too. I'll pray for everything. Okay. Okay. So the, the issue is the spine with everything. The hand, the legs, it's, it's the spine. Hey, great. I've heard, look, I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell you one testimony. I have so many though. I knew a woman. Uh, actually, I'll tell you about this one. I knew a man, a man. He had, he had sponge kidneys. Who knows about this testimony? Which means your kidneys completely fail and you start pissing pure blood. He literally in his bed before he was about to die said, Jesus, heal me. He died. God literally gave him a kidney transplant in the spirit and gave him a brand new kidney. He came back at 12 years old. Ten years later, he got, what was it? He got, it was, uh, he got a heart attack. And the doctor said he was going to die of heart failure. He prayed for 14 months using only scripture, completely healed. Ten years later, diagnosed with cancer, terminal. Prayed the scriptures for a while, completely healed. This man prays three times a day, every day, and never misses a day. And he literally declares and decrees the word of God as his prescription now. He's like 70 years old, still running. If he can be healed of all that, you don't think God can heal you? I know he can. But the Lord wants you to release bitterness, unforgiveness to him and anybody else. He wants you to have love and joy and peace in your heart. He wants you to, with your husband, go on this journey. Because it's going to be a powerful testimony to the nations. I, I actually just saw a vision of me seeing you later. And you're walking. At an event. When he was older. He looked older in the, in the vision. Are you willing to go on this journey? Okay, I'm going to pray for you. One more time. Father, I pray for a spine in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would align everything. I pray that she would walk, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name against the doubt and unbelief, Lord, that you would fill her with your word. That her mind would be saturated with your word and not her thoughts. Your thoughts and not her thoughts. That her mind would become like you, Lord, transformer, renewer. And thank you for her husband being so supportive, Lord. I pray that you give him strength, Lord, and boldness to build, Lord. And even as you send him to the nations in the future, Lord, his wife will not be in a wheelchair. Bless them with a child too, Lord, a baby. I pray with the devil meant for evil, Lord, you turn it around and, and for good, Lord. Romans 8, 28, all things work for the good of those who love God that are called according to his purpose. I right now declare that over her body and over her husband in marriage. All things work. For the good of those who love God. And they are called to your purpose, Lord. So in Jesus' name, bless them, protect them, and build their home. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're going to be so happy later. You're going to be like, man, God, you're going to just tell everybody about God's healing. God's birthing a ministry through you. I was nine years with a disease. They, I got four endoscopies. The doctor said it's just genetics. You can't do nothing about it. I accepted the fact that I was going to be taking all these pills for the rest of my life as a 20-year-old. Nine years suffering. You know how hard that was? I couldn't eat nothing without pills. And then the pills would mess me up too. So it was causing more issues. But I came to Christ. One three-day fast and God completely de delivered me. And I could eat... No problem. No issues. He's real, man. And he can heal you. He just wants you to grow in his word. I keep it 100. You want me to be real with you, right? Okay. And happy birthday. This is the prescription that will save everything. Amen. Do you want to try to walk? Do you want to try or no? you want to try to walk? Come on. help you need help with her oh you got it here let's move her over here in the middle in the middle friend. oh there you go and then back up front there you go cool all right you ready let's see where we can go tonight
Feet be healed. Feet be healed. I command the feet to be healed, the spine to line up. Put my hand on the spine. I command the spine to line up in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Rabasu. Wherever, this, wherever the, the bullet grazes, Lord, I command full healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you move your foot at all? At all? You trying? Okay. Try again. There we go. There we go. Put it back down. Put it back down. Hey, Talon. When she moved her left foot, was that you? Was, 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 that, was that you guys or was that her? You could be real. That wasn't you. Okay. And then, and then when you picked her up, did it cause her to move or did she move it? It's moving right now. Was it doing that? Huh? It's a spasm? Yeah, that's just a spasm. Like, that means her legs not dead. That means what? It, it means her legs not dead. It just come back. Amen. <laughs> I'll pray for her. We're going to bless her in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for this healer. She's going to be a healer, Lord. That after today, Lord, you ignite the ministry of faith, a harvest of faith, Lord. Father God, that she would get in your word and she would love it more than ever before, Lord. That she would look, look at me, look at me. Don't be rejected. So what? Who cares? Father, give her confidence and faith, Lord. Fill her up with so much faith, Lord, that it's not that she doesn't even understand what happened. I pray that even her reality has completely completely shifts, and it's just heaven. We all pray together, the, the saints, and we're one or two agree. What happens? Every word is established in heaven, so we all come in agreement. If you come in agreement, say in Jesus' name, Amen. Everything changes today. God bless you. God bless you, bro. He makes really good Christian rap. Y'all go check him out. His name is Tylen 1K. Amen? He's really good, for real. I love you, bro. I'm going to talk to you. All right. What time is it? <laughs> it's 5 o'clock, so we actually have to leave here, unfortunately. Now, it was fortunate. They let us stay here for so long. By 6 o'clock. So with that being said, um, woman of God in the back, has all the food been sold? It's all gone. Free. <laughs> Go get your food. And we're going to wrap it up. Hey, let's get out of here.